Hi. Hello. Hi. We're here. We're here. Hello. All right. So today we have Jessica Alexander. Woo woo. Am I saying that right? Jessica yes. Alexander, mm-hmm. aka Jess, yeah. here with us on Squeezing the Juice. And we're super excited to talk to you, Jess. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. We're so um, where are you at? Where is this beautiful background that you are? This located is my in? home uh in los angeles now um i just moved here i've been here like two and a half months now so uh this is my house this is my room um and yeah that's where i am i'm in larchmont village is where i live (laughs) now i know i'm learning i'm like i don't know people are like where do you live i'm like "Mm, la somewhere (laughs) la is huge la is huge yeah it's sprawling i'm like it's like atlanta in that way so that but it's just a totally different place but yeah i'm into it so far <laughs> yeah and then you came from portland i guess tell us why you moved like let's just jump into it your life story <laughs> uh okay yeah i um so i'm from atlanta georgia originally uh born and raised east atlanta and then i moved to portland um and i was living in portland the last five years and now i'm in la and um Yeah. So I became a trainer in Atlanta, which we'll get into all that. But then I was working at Nike World headquarters in Portland, but I moved to LA. One, I wanted to, like, I think I had always, like, I've been coming here a lot for work for a long time. Um, And then, and it just felt like it was the next step. Um, But I moved here now uh, to take the job as the uh, USA Olympic skateboarding team trainer. And then I also work as the Nike SB performance coach and athletic trainer yeah so awesome yeah it's awesome thanks man it's huge it's like it's a dream job like honestly and it's been like so fucking cool and i'm so grateful and it's been quite the journey to get here to say the least in my life and my career um so now being here is like great yeah and isn't it accurate to say that you're the first ever because there's never been a usa skate team before so you're actually the first ever trainer and coach yeah First ever, it's know. crazy i forget that i i honestly i think because you're just in it and you're going and like my home girls are like yo like back home they're like you're part of history right now the fuck i'm like i know yeah what oh yeah like sick yeah. Uh, so, yeah yeah it's cool yeah so, yeah and that's actually like why i think with this show like me and ashley you know had this idea to just like chat with our friends and talk to cool people and experts and um you know the goal really is to like bring to light people who like we don't know how did that person get that job how did they end up doing that like that's such a cool unique story um and you having this background of like you know fitness and physical health but then totally being like this integral piece of you know the skateboarding the skateboarding community right now is just so unique so um i'm excited to to dive deeper into that um but i did just remember i realized that we Need to do our check-in questions. So <laughs> just oh, dive yeah. over here for a check-in question. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get oh, into God. The, the details. <laughs> check-in question. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have something, this. Ash? Um, so on the spot. Let's go. Ash. I mean, I have so many. <laughs> go I, easy we on can go with them. one of our we can go with one of our um, <laughs> classic skate like a girl check-in questions. Do you like wait, do you like eggs? Do you eat eggs? I love eggs, but I just learned that I'm allergic to them. Oh, oh wow. wow. I'm having yeah. it sucks. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry for my I family. do love eggs, but they <laughs> fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if we we're looking at like cooking eggs as an art form, what's your favorite form of eggs? Oh, I got you. To eat them or not. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. I, in in you guys eating are such eggs. trainers. What's your favorite form? What's <laughs> <laughs> your favorite form of an egg? Um, definitely over easy. I love me and a good over easy egg like that shit is so good like piece of bread and like spinach and some mushrooms or some shit or like mm. toast i don't know that's sh- uh, over easy is just like oh, it's just perfect yolk yeah some people just can't handle the runny though the yolk like yeah. people freak out but i, I love it, it. I, love I do it. too i'm like i just see it it's like pew. that's so like, wild yeah why why would do you have something about that yeah no? you don't like it Wait, yeah. me? Yeah, yeah you. No, 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 I love it. Uh, I was oh, just, like, it's wild that people don't like, like the yolk. Yeah, like, what's wrong? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just sitting with all of it. I w- then I started to go to, like, I'm so sorry you can't eat that many. Yeah, it's a sad day. And then I, I started thinking, depressing like, check-in question. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. God. This is what happened. Way to remind to me. Way, way to bring it up, guys. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs> what about, um? okay, so how about a, a check-in question that... 
Okay, okay wait, I have a silly one. Okay, now okay. You have one. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> if you could shoot anything out of your fingers, what would it be? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh man. If I could shoot anything out of my fingers, it could be like one, two, it could be five, seven. Oh, it had to be something cool. Like my first thought is chocolate because I'm a sweet head. So if I could just <laughs> constantly like drizzle like on anything, just like, ooh, Start fuck drizzling. yeah. Like, cover yeah. that like some whipped cream or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but I feel That's like I could one. come up with something cooler, like not electricity, but like something that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> first thought is food and chocolate. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck yeah. Food and something helpful. Yeah. You can you can make like one finger something different. Each finger oh, something that's different. That's a lot of choices. I know. Chocolate, chocolate would be one. Let's for keep sure, it to one then. hand. Yeah, one hand. I would definitely do chocolate. Maybe like oh, gasoline. I don't want to pay for gas anymore. Stick your finger that's into real. your gasoline. <laughs> uh, That'd be so convenient. I'm You'd not gonna call so triple I'm gonna call Jessica. You'd never have to go to a gas station. <laughs> right? Oh man. <laughs> It's really good. Yeah, I don't know what else, fam. Uh, something like maybe automatic, like pill, like something to like if I could like just mattress down when I want or like pillows, like it just Ooh. Boom, I'm like nap. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Tequila probably also for <laughs> you know those moments when you need that shit. Under yeah, <laughs> the mattress would come in handy after the tequila. I see. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to take a nap. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah, such a good way. You, instead of giving people gas money for a ride home, just give just, them some gas. Just give a them shot. Some gas. Yeah, just a yeah. little bit. A little shot. Gas. What do you want? <laughs> What's your preferred poison here? <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> I think you have two more fingers. Oh drink. shit! You're right. Yeah. Oh, coffee. Oh, yeah, that's a good, good one. coffee. Oh. I mean, just yeah. ready to go. Ugh. Um, and then snacks on hand. Don't know the snacks because snacks. snacks change, but definitely <laughs> snacks. I'm you could just keep eat. it just snacks. General snacks. You know? Yeah, look at that. General, 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 general snacks. snacks. Yeah, I love just it. like whatever, whatever <laughs> I'm feeling. So I love it. Nice. All right, Kim. What, how what would you shoot out of all five fingers? Oh man, I mean, those are some good ones. I think. I'm going to go to my default answers. Water for sure. It's one. Such a logical person. Uh, But power, like be able to charge your phone or your laptop. That'd be one. Or like a power outlet. I don't know if that's, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You could like charge things in your finger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think coffee for sure. Like that would be so convenient. (laughs) Coffee. um, What else? Maybe um, like (laughs) HVAC, like AC and heater. So like if I. (laughs) Oh my God. You're so survival. I love this. Oh my God. She's always cold. I'm just like, and then if I'm hot, you know, on occasion, it'd just be like AC, like a fan, you know, (laughs) how many is that? I think that's five. Yeah. 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 AC is one. Blow dryer would be convenient. Sometimes when I'm super cold, I just take my blow dryer and just like blow my Same. Does anyone else do that? (laughs) Same. Super waste of electricity. I'm I'm always cold. Same. I'm always cold. Yep. I'm one of those. And (laughs) I literally. Here's the trick tip. You put it under your shirt so then it just warms up your Oh, hole. yeah. Yeah. You I got you. I put it in now. my sock, too. Yeah. Down your pants. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. wait. Like, you heat up your sock and put uh-huh. it on or you do it while the sock No, I, like, like, like open, open up, the sock. Yeah. Open the tube. <laughs> open the wow. tube. Yeah. It's a thing. Wow. I guess this podcast is over. You're, just you're <laughs> like, you know, Guys, tips yeah, you're always cold, too. <laughs> it's cold uh-huh. in the bay. That, yeah. yeah, it's true. So is that, is that five? Yeah, it's five. Okay, great. Ash. Five. Okay, so definitely snacks. <laughs> That's going to be on my thumb for sure. Snacks. Um, Specific for snacks? sure the thumb. For plantain sure chips? Thumb. Yeah. Plantain yeah. chips. Oh my God, plantains all day. Ashley got hooked me on. Like, plantain got me hooked on plantain, plantain chips. Freak. So good. All forms of plantain. All yeah. of them. Out There's of nuts. the thumb. Um, and then definitely like Wi-Fi. Ooh, oh. That's a good one. It's good. And then I definitely think like electricity. Because I feel like that could yeah. probably charge, whatever it is. In this right? day and age, in general. yeah, yeah. And then, you need um, it. Uh, hydration for sure. Uh, yeah. Alkaline water. Alkaline water. Oh. Not just water. We're going ten <laughs> out of the room as well. Oh, oh no, okay. pinky because we're fancy. <laughs> Alkaline like water that. out of the I pinky. like that you're choosing your fingers to be <laughs> specific things. This is very. I like this. Uh, I've never thought about this question before. Definitely not. <laughs> Um, I think I have one more finger. Um, let's do something. I think healing, like a healing power. Oh, 
yeah. Fix the boo boos. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Yeah, that's that would be one. convenient. Like skating, like, you just be like, like oh, I don't need a red light. light. Yeah, just yeah. like heal up the wounds. That'd yeah, be tight. that's good. That's good. um. Since you guys are fitness and nutrition professionals, can we just like get a conclusion about alkaline water? Like, because people think so many different things about it, and I don't right. know the answer. But what do you? What are you guys? Thoughts? Ash, go for it. I want to okay, hear your maybe so, you have different opinions. So mine has like definitely shifted over time, and I'd say right now because you know there's research information all of it is always changing so i'll say mm -hmm. right now i do feel like there is some truth to alkalinity of the water and what we put what humans put in their body in terms of just average diet is very acidic and so when you look at the ph levels of the human body if we're just putting in a whole lot of acid that's going to really throw off your actual like ph levels as mm -hmm. a human and i think like inflammation and things like that get attributed to that um, or it's just not going to be in your favor so i do think higher alkaline water is real in terms of like if we are energy and water is energy and the ability to like make sure we're balanced human beings i think that adds to that so in I short as of right now i do think there's some absolute truth to like higher alkaline water i and agree going i totally agree that. when it comes to like ph balance and and things like that i always just tell people the biggest thing is like it's amazing if you can get alkaline water but i'm like yeah. if you're not just drinking general water and general like just hydrate in general yeah. but like I'm a fuck yes to alkaline water as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. As of right now, because yeah. like you right, say, right. research changes. In right. six months, I could be like, <laughs> nope, I take it all back. Like, <laughs> it's just, I'm wrong. So you yeah. never know. But right now, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Fun fact. One of the first, because I like saw it everywhere, but one of the first people that I knew, like that I knew started drinking it was actually Samaria. We were like at some event mm. and she was like, oh, uh, it was like super hot out. It must have been like due to her or something. And she, I was like, oh, do you want a water? Because, you know, they have like tons of like water bottles on just like, you know, for those skaters. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want that water. Like, I, can you go grab my Fuck like yes, my water Maria. bottles? I want there. my and out I was to like, Samaria. Yeah, I was like, why? Samaria. And then she <laughs> explained it to me. And I was like, well, what's the difference? And then she's like, oh, I have alkaline water. And, I was like, <laughs> go and then I started she's hearing like your boss. More about we literally it. have a hydration challenge going on right now. Amazing. We, uh, we like have been texting each other pictures of like our canteens and like who can drink more this, did it. but I not in that kind of way we're just like rooting each other on yeah to stay hydrated during this yeah. it's like hard to remember to drink water like it sounds really stupid but like sometimes i just forget like it's crazy the water carry, bottle helps so helps. much yeah exactly. but like it really does because i'm like if i don't have it i notice if i forget to have it with me I'll go, I'll literally, it'll be 5 p.m. And I'm like, I have not had any water. But if it's just like this big ass thing just staring me in the face every yeah, now and yeah. again, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's, I gotta do that. Yeah. Well, I feel like too, it's like, I'm also not sure on like how much I've drank through the day. If I'm like, oh, I need a glass of water and I drink it and I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. But if I have a set can of yeah. it's a certain yeah. amount of ounces, I know how many of those I need to drink. Yep. So that's yeah. what works for me. But for Samaria, for instance, we talked about when she's at home, it's so much easier to like just yeah my water. problem True. Yeah, that's my problem net since we've been at home like i don't use a water bottle at home usually i use it for like when i'm out and about so it's like i need maybe i just gotta go back to the water bottle at home situation yeah, yeah. but anyways okay cool anyway. <sighs> all right I miss that's a good check-in question yeah, I know <laughs> shout, out to <laughs> shout out to samaria i miss her so much right we had like a video conference the other day with the whole team because obviously like through all this. I saw able. that everyone posted about that. Everybody, it was insane. Thing. But I, honestly, I didn't realize how like, you know, I miss them so much. But then when all their faces started popping up, I was like, oh, 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 oh I miss you. Like, oh, it was so good. But uh, yeah. That's miss you, so Samaria. Awesome. Shout For out real. to you. Outline. Shout out. That's awesome. So cool. Um, Cool. Well, I guess we can... Uh, you know, just jump right into it, even though we kind of already did. Um, I'm just, I guess I'm curious. I know that you've like shared your story out a few times, um, but I'm curious, like for, I'm assuming that a lot of people that might be listening or watching this uh, specific show, like don't know you super well. They like probably know of you because like skaters are posting and all that stuff, Instagram mm -hmm. stories. Um, but I, and I, I actually personally would love to know sort of like how you got to, you know, this position or where you're at um in your career and even just like your relationship to fitness in general like were you like that kid that was like i'm gonna be a fitness professional <laughs> when oh, i grow oh, up like oh my god not that, i don't know if like, <laughs> kids have that mentality but I mean, they like, do now i mean they do now yeah like, yeah i'm now, like that's okay. true like yeah. wow 
I feel um, like in our ger- generation, it wasn't a thing though. Cause it no. wasn't like a thing. It wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't, I feel like as certain people were drawn popular. to it, like our yeah. generation, certain people. Um, yeah. There was yeah. like those. Yeah. But it wasn't like a thing. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a thing for sure. Definitely not for me either. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'd love to tell you it's been a winding road. So like, I guess I I'll tell you a little bit about like my upbringing, my background, how I found fitness and then more like into skateboarding and like how that's all kind of like come together now. Um, yeah, I didn't grow up <laughs> a fit kid at fucking all or like any, <laughs> any framework for being healthy uh, or anything. I, I grew up, um, <clears throat> So again, I grew up in the South. I'm from Atlanta. I'm very proud of that. I love Atlanta. I'm proud of my city. Um, but I, awesome. I, I grew up in not. I grew up in a household that wasn't conducive uh, to, like it. It wasn't normal. I mean, what is normal? But I, um, when I was little, I endured a lot of different types of abuse. So whether that be physical, emotional, mental, sexual, like you name it it was going on. Um, and so growing up, like, uh, when I was a little girl, it happened a lot when I was like a little kid. And then I, uh, my mom really tried to do her best to protect me from it and whatever tools she had in whatever way that she could. Um, but unfortunately our system at the time, uh, didn't do a great job of protecting us and she could only do the best that she could. So I had a lot of things happen when I was like a really young little girl. And so my childhood was not, it was like a very, I was like a really scared kid, a really shy kid, very traumatized kid. Um, and my parents had split up when I was like little, little, like they'd been split up since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my, I was living with my mom and then uh, had, I didn't think I'd ever have to see my dad again. So my dad was a source of that. And lo and behold, I did. You have to remember, like, when it comes to trauma, like, there's a lot now. We talk about it a lot. And a lot more people are, like, comfortable sharing their stories. Um, back in the early 90s, that was, like, so still taboo. There wasn't even, like, law and order SVU. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like this wasn't a thing. Yeah. Like, it's so yeah. – um, we had a lot of – trouble like trying to be um, okay and protected and so anyway they had been split up and then I started having to go back and see uh, my dad when I was like a kid so I would go visit him and stay with my mom and then when I turned like 12-ish I had to go live with him Um, again so my mom had turned into I think with her being really um, trying to find her way to be safe and protected she had turned like heavy to religion like extreme so like speaking in tongues and like fire and brimstone and kind of this language of like you must be perfect you must repent and things like that and that wasn't great for a kid like me who was uh not normal um and having trouble and then but then I had to go live with my dad which was the other extreme of an environment so in that household I was like it was like a it was like lord of the flies like, honestly, like at the, my dad was a very mentally ill person, um, very up and down, very erratic, um, very, uh, he could be the life of the party mm-hmm. or he could be the worst guy ever. And you just didn't know what you're going to walk into that day. And, uh, that household, have you ever seen Shameless? Yeah. Like the show? Yeah. It sometimes some people have, but it's like a good reference point to be like, Oh, your house was like that. It was just like, I barely went to school. I didn't really have anyone telling me to go to school. I had to get a job like right when I moved there. Um, There was parties going on like every night and every day. Um, And so it was like, if you came downstairs, it could be a party going on and it could be amazing and everyone's in a good mood. Or I could come downstairs and my dad could be like in one of his moods, like throwing plates at your head, calling you a cunt. Like you really didn't know what was going to go on. And so I lived with him and his wife at the time. And then we just had like random people living there, like his employees, uh, like most of them were grown men with criminal records. He owned uh, like a landscape lighting company. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was just very much in survival mode constantly. Like you just, for me, I can look hindsight and say I was in survival mode, but like you don't know your framework for normal compared to someone else's normal. It's for you, it's just normal. So like- I started drinking and doing drugs with these adults when I was like 12. 
I think I started drinking when I was 12. I started doing smoking weed when I was 12. And then I started getting into hard drugs more when I was like 13, 14. Yeah. And um, yeah, like our ways of managing conflict, like I never realized this, but it would be like everyone outside, go take shots and then like fist fight. And you just like fight it out. And like, and, and that was just, it was just this crazy environment. And so I wasn't doing well in school, like when I went, mm -hmm. if I went. Um, and I had always had trouble learning growing up. And now again, hindsight, I can look back and be like, oh, I like, of course I couldn't pay attention. Of course I didn't test well. Of course it was, you know, but of course yeah. in school, they just put you in remedial classes and kind of just like, oh, you're dumb. And so I just thought I was dumb. And so I would just not go to school and party and no one was really telling me that I needed to do anything else. And so that household got bad enough to where I moved out. There was, again, so it was like I had a lot happen to me as a young girl. And then in my teens within that house, there was a lot of the same things happening, like lots of different types of abuse. And so I about 15, I moved out. I think I'd maybe on the verge of turning 16, like I couldn't even drive yet. Um, and I just moved in with a boyfriend's family at that time and then kind of rented a room from a friend. Um, and I was just kind of out there and I had three jobs and I dropped out of school because <laughs> that was not my first priority. Like that uh, was not something that I even looked at as a priority. Um, and luckily I did end up going back and I got my high school diploma and I finished at an alternative school. Um, but I was just kind of out in the world trying to figure it out, trying to work, trying to hustle, um, in my free time. Uh, that's when I skated when I was younger, like my cousin had taught me how to skate when I was like 13, but then I just kind of was in this environment and stopped, but I was still within the community. So if I wasn't working, then I was just like going to punk shows and like going to my skate community and just fucking partying and ripping my body apart there. Um, and yeah, so Flash forward, like I'm, I'm just, I maybe was like 17, 18, didn't know where to go. My aunt had given me, she was really the only like guiding light in my um, life. And she was mm -hmm. the one who encouraged me to finish high school. She kind of swooped in like, okay, well, you have to get a high school diploma. So I had lived with her for a couple months. But then after that, I was back on my own and um, I had no direction, no discipline, no real adults in my life. And I, at that time I was working, but then I realized I could get more money like stealing. I was like, I was straight up like steal. You remember when North faces were popular? Like those yeah. were like the thing yeah. I was stealing hella North faces and like reselling them on eBay and to like bros and like all just had all these little hustles going on iPods. We would like steal them, resell them like just, I'm like, it, I was out there. Um, but then I started, uh, I started working at a strip club and I started dancing because I didn't know where to turn. I wasn't making enough money to survive. And I thought that that was really the only option that I had available. Um, so it was like, if I was working, I was working in a sex work industry, stripping, partying there to just like get by and do it. Um, and then if I wasn't there, I was partying with my friends and going to shows. And so I was just partying and I, hit a rock bottom point I think when I was about 21 like I had you know this time in your life when you're just supposed to be just even embarking on any of that or like right. seeing what that is I hit the lowest point I've ever had I was so depressed I was so anxiety riddled and I was always the type of person that was like I'm fine like I never even looked at any of that stuff I just described as bad like I didn't have a reference point again I was like I'm cool like it's whatever my shit's it's just my life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was really struggling to be okay. And I wasn't okay. And I was hyper paranoid. I was, uh, I like created storylines in my head that weren't real. I didn't trust anyone. I was way off and I'm fucked up more than I was sober. Um, and so I, I realized like I had a point where I was like, I have to kind of get my shit together. I got to figure something out. And so I had stopped drinking for a while and kind of pulled away from my friends. And that's when I really found training. Um, Cause I, even then I, I just was like, Oh, I need to get healthy. You know what I mean? Like I just need to get healthy or like I've gained weight. So usually when people find fitness, I know you know this, Ashley, like it's mm -hmm. like 
aesthetic for the most part. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I just, I should, I should do this thing. So I was like, I'll, I'll start training. And I remember I tried, <laughs> I like tried spin. I was like, what is this hinky ass fucking shit? I hated it. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was not into it. And then, like, <laughs> yoga, like, any woo-woo shit at that time, which is yeah. comical now because I'm very woo-woo. Um, but, like, I was just like, the fuck? No. I, like, I hated it. I was like, I tried running. I, like, didn't – I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I remember – I found a gym. I guess it would have been CrossFit before CrossFit was CrossFit. Um, mm-hmm. It was like this bare bones powerlifting gym that had some hit classes. And I was really attracted to that. I did my first class and it was gnarly. It was hard. It was raw in there. It felt more like a venue, I guess. Maybe that's why I liked it. Like it was like warehousey, which I had been in my whole life. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, okay, I can fuck with this. Like this is tight. And so I kept going back and I was still like, not in a good place, but that is where I learned these disciplines that were never taught to me. I had um, coaches, one, like looking out for me. Like if I didn't show up, they'd be like, where were you? And I'm like, why do you fucking care? Like, yeah. what are you, who are you? You know, but it, they kept, they would ask. And if I showed up drunk or showed up hungover, like nobody, everyone just wanted to make sure I was good and check in on me. And they taught me, um, through lifting and through training, I was learning things that I never thought I was capable of, like how powerful my body was and goal setting and being disciplined and showing up and showing up on time. And these are things that genuinely growing up, I, I never had a framework for. I just never like had anything like that. So in me trying to get fit, um, I learned so much more and it changed me so much deeper. Like it showed me a power in my body I had never known. I never felt powerful in my body. I thought all I had to offer the world was like nothing, sex maybe. Like that's why I got into the work I was in and thought I was stupid and I was, I was learning a lot. And so it changed my life. Like it totally changed who I was. It, it, and I realized in that moment, I was like, I want to do this for other people. This is all that I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to help other kids like me. I want to help other people like me. Like, he, be stronger and be better and, and have these epiphanies through this, this medium, through this vessel that is training. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got there. And then I, I threw myself into that shit. I was just like, this is all that I want to do. And I attached myself to coaches and mentors. Like I didn't even know I had never been to school or done anything like that. So I didn't know what to do. So I would just show up like at these trainers that I'm like, looked up to and just not go away. That's something I'm very <laughs> persistent. You know, see, I, that is the one thing I've got. I'll just be like, I'm here. I'm not going away. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I would study under them and learn from them and just keep showing up and keep learning and keep trying to prove that I wanted to do this. And then from there, they taught me, you know, go get this certification, go learn this, go take these classes. You need to go get this. And this is how you do this and, and helped me along. Um, and so yeah. So then from there, I, um, and this is, you're still like in your early twenties in Atlanta. Oh yeah. Oh, in Atlanta. Yeah. And I was still like, Elder? yeah, I'm 29. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're so still in your twenties. Okay. So yeah, I'm still like- in my twenties. So it's not that, not that crazy long ago. This was maybe eight years ago. So I was like 22. Okay. Um, and so yeah, I was 20. Is that 22? Oh, fuck. Yeah. So that's when I really, and that's, I threw myself into it and then got like was studying under a PT at the time. Uh, who gave me so much, like really believed in me and gave me so much knowledge. And so was training. And then I got scouted. So by Nike if it, in Atlanta, which was fucking crazy to me. This is like, I was a couple years in the game. I had been studying under coaches for a while or training. And then I, I couldn't believe it. Like I got scouted by Nike in Atlanta and then interviewed at Nike world headquarters for a position. I'll never forget that because I, I literally like being like a little ghetto trash kid. Like I was one, the fact that Nike even took my call or wanted me in there. And then two, when I, I genuinely thought I like went for this interview, I was like, you know what? At least I got to interview at Nike HQ. Like who gets to say they did that? I was sure that I wasn't going to get the job. I was like, I'm not going to get it. And I did. And I lost my shit. <laughs> like I like wow. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh fuck. Okay. Oh, I I can do this. Um, and so after getting scouted by Nike, I moved out to 
Portland, Oregon, uh, which I never thought I'd live there. Uh, <laughs> it's the opposite of Atlanta. <laughs> literally, yo. That is literally the opposite. <laughs> Segue from that, I couldn't, oh, y'all. Man. I literally like got to- culture play. shock right there. <laughs> I like growing up the way I grew up around the people I grew up and like I, and then I got to Portland and I was just like, what the fuck? Well, everyone's white. There's coaches yeah. everywhere. What the hell is going on? I was so, I hated it. When it and rain. Yes. Oh. But I learned to love it. It was the place where I really healed, I would say. Um, so mm. I started working for Nike and uh, I became a Nike master trainer. And that opened up my network more than I could have ever imagined. And I had always said, like, I want to work with athletes. I want to work with athletes. I've always loved sports, just like watching it. I love football, I love basketball, total jock. Um, and I wanted to work in that arena, but there's not a lot of female strength conditioning coaches. And it was really hard for me to get taken seriously. And Nike really helped open that door for me. And I got a lot of amazing strength co- coach mentors through that and was able to then begin work with uh, NBA players and NFL players and track athletes and all different scopes of athletes and, and, and broaden my scope of practice more than I could have ever imagined. Um, and that was really cool. And it was also the place where I really started my own journey into my healing of my trauma because I think that I I used training as a cover up, which I think a lot of people do. Um, maybe not in in the skate world, like the skate world, the training's not even you know it's a very new medium to be used. But I think most people, it's like a new drug. Like it was almost like okay, well now I just go cover it up. Like if I felt anything or felt any type of way, I just train like three times a day and, yeah. and threw my escape. Yeah. It's like an escape for your body and it's the same, you know, your body goes into fight or flight. So it feels good. It's like this like punishing kind of thing. But Um, but also familiar, right? Yeah. There's a, I think about fitness and I think about skateboarding and both those things are the exact same thing they've been through for my life is like Mm -hmm. an escape. It's like a sense of freedom, but there's also like a familiarity of like, like you get re like you're alive, like you skate and you slam and you feel like I don't know. There's something about being able to like get through that pain again, but like, and if you're, especially if you're somebody that's familiar with like pain and pain looking a lot of different ways, like it can be a similar way to like get back to that place of comfort, I but feel in that. a positive way. Yeah. Mm-hmm, exactly. And that was kind of the thing, like skating when I was younger and then finding training and it's like that pain response and you want it. And, but that only lasts so long. Right. And I hit another, my own personal, like rock bottom point in Portland. Like I thought I was good. I was a Nike master trainer. I was doing all this fucking great shit. And then went through a gnarly breakup and it like, I I, like was going back to habits I hadn't touched in so long, like so many self harmful things. And again, I was like, fuck, you've worked so hard to get here. Like if you don't fucking do something, like actually do something about it, you're going to lose everything you've worked for. And so that's when I started to, like, I discovered I had severe PTSD. I got diagnosed. I had no fucking clue. I didn't know what that meant. And I didn't know that I, like, what disassociation meant or, like, what any of these, I had no idea. And so being a trainer and a coach, of course, I dove into the science behind it and, like, how the nervous system works, how the body responds, like, how your brain communicates with your nervous system, what happens when you go into fight or flight. And so now it's a really big scope of, like, no matter what athlete I'm looking at, it's, it's, or working with it's a piece that you can't ignore um and and me being able to experience that firsthand so there's that piece and that's also where like skateboarding and training came back together um like during that time I remember my cousin who taught me how to skate and got me skating in Atlanta came out to visit me and fucking called me out so hard he was like why'd you stop skating? And I actually stopped skating. I hate admitting this, but I stopped skating when I was younger. Like, yeah, I was going through some fucked up shit, but there wasn't a lot of females. And in the South, there's a lot of language. Unfortunately, it's obviously changing now, but especially back then, uh, that was not conducive to a girl skating or a woman's place in general, not even just in the skateboarding community. Yeah. Um, and I totally caved into that and I just didn't want to go anymore and I didn't show up anymore. And, um, yeah, he came out to visit me and he was like, fuck's wrong with you why'd you stop like you're being a fucking bitch he's like you can you can thrust yourself into the strength conditioning world but like you stop skating i was like oh fuck okay you're right and my whole community is skateboarders he was like i don't understand this so i started skating again out there and then even through that like simultaneously all my friends would be they'd be getting injured they don't have any health insurance and so they always would come to me they did over the years but i swear i once i was back in it myself i was like oh 
right. Like, and they were just like, yo, I don't know what to do. Like, can you help me? And so I would be helping them understanding obviously what they're doing, the type of person that they are and like specific needs to like what skateboard demands of the body. I mean, it's a very, it's a very specific uh, sport or it's a very specific activity where it's like very imbalanced and looking at if they're goofy or they're regular or like what common injuries happen and like being able to help them. And so and I was like, why the fuck am I not focusing my attention on the people and the community I love most and the people I understand most? Like, why am, what am I, what am I doing? I'm over here working with NFL players, which is great. <laughs> but like, these are the people, this is my, these are my people. What the fuck am I doing? This is what I know. This is what I follow. And um, so, yeah, so then I was like, fuck, I should do this. I should do this. And I remember the person who really helped me at Nike take that on uh, is Mel Strong. I will always be very, very, very grateful to that woman because she was working in Nike training when I was a Nike master trainer and then had moved back over to SB. And I remember she was, she, say, she was like, why are you not doing this? She's like, you are the person. The, like, what the, f- why are you doing this for our athletes? I was like, I don't know. I want to though. Like, well, let's go. Let's go. Um, and so that's when I really started to focus my attention. And it's wild because I had actually talked about this concept a long time ago, like back in Atlanta, like I remember sitting at Elmere and talking to friends about it, like I should do it, but it just never, I never went for it or took off with it. Um, and she was the one who just gave me the green light. It was like, you're, you're why? Like, why are you not? I don't know. So <laughs> I don't know, you're right. Like, Oh God, yeah. um, gave me permission. And so then I started to pitch to Nike SB and, um, Nike is a, it's, not it's a beast it's a corporation so like if it were just up to mel you know what i mean we would have had budget approved and done all these fucking things but like that's just not how it works and so i had to come into nike and pitch and pitch and pitch and explain to them why this is valuable and why they need to have a trainer and why preventative training is so important and like i had to get 10 no's before i got one yes and just like i again there's that persistence i'm like <laughs> what's good I'm not going away like this is I I believe in this and we're gonna do this and so um yeah they finally listened to me and understood the value and I simultaneously at that time um I had been working with on my own so while I was getting nose with for them I kind of went around and started working with Leo Baker and Deshaun and like just being in the community starting to work with athletes on my own um, which was really powerful, um, because it showed me like, you don't even need that, you know, a brand or name backing, like the athletes wanted this and they wanted to be better and they wanted to, you know, understand how to train and train specifically. And they wanted to listen to me cause they were like, Oh, you understand skateboarding. Like you get it. And you also have this expertise. Okay. We want to listen to you. And it was really, it was a really powerful time for that to start coming together. Um, so yeah, then I would be traveling with Leo Baker um, and like going to these competitions. And then that's kind of how I got involved with the Olympic team. It just kind of happened organically. So again, I was working with these athletes on my own and starting to create protocols and, and learn best practices. And then I was going to these competitions and realized there's no support. Like I was like, okay, this is happening. And I'd be like, hey, I need to talk to your athletic support, your medical staff, like, just so I'm in communication with them. And they were just like... You're like, what? Who? Who? <laughs> yeah, literally, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? What am I talking about? Like, your medical staff that they have for you? They're like, mm-hmm. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> so wild. I, that just makes me think of, like, I've been to, like, every single freaking skate contest, not more recently, but in the past decade. And the shit, like... The skaters don't even warm up. They just go and huck themselves just down. Down shit. Like, which a set I, of stairs at like which, X Games. And I'm like, now thinking back, I'm like, what? Like, why wasn't there any? Because there's there's no other way. Like, there's no like precedent. So like, I'm so glad now that like, you know, there's actually people that can say, hey, maybe you should stretch or do this first or whatever. But back then it was just like, and people yeah. would just get broken off all the time, like at practice. Totally. And, and I'm that just was, like, that sucks. That sucks. And that was the whole thing. I remember being at home and one of my homies was just like, or I started, and that was another thing. Like I started working with my friend Raven and he came into me and he's all kinds of broken. And I'm just like, dude, if you just do these few things for your ankles before you go, I promise they'll be like right. way more ready to handle what you're about yeah. to do to them. And just it's like, like, 
just creating that relationship, like, just like, give me, give me this yeah, little bit. And then at yeah. competitions, though, I'm like, absolutely. Like, absolutely. You're going to be like 10 times better off and feel more confident and your body's going to be way more ready and like to handle anything that comes at it. You know what I mean? Your nervous system is going to be on and firing and ready to go. And so that was kind of the message that I want. I still want to be able to send is like, yeah, forever in the skateboarding community. It's been like, okay, you, your injury is unavoidable. Like period. There's no injury yeah. prevention. I don't like that term because like it's not preventable, but we can take the risk down. So it's right. like, you know, there's been a lot of language around uh, like you get injured and then you go to physical therapy. So it's right. like you get injured and then you heal. But, but why are we not doing, what do you do when you go to physical therapy? You strength train. If you're at a good physical therapist, you're not just getting like lasered and massaged. Like right. you're training the tissue back to being strong. So why the fuck wouldn't you be preventing Preventing. that and and training western medicine approach yeah Yeah, like why are you not doing that in the first place to try and avoid the injury or when you do go into that compromised position you are more ready to take it and you're going to less likely have as bad of an injury and you're going to heal faster so that is still the message that i'm still trying to send and people are starting to understand and see the benefit because once they start doing it they're like Oh fuck! I feel so wow. much better. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's tight, right? Like, and it doesn't even take that much. It's just consistency. Yeah. So, so anyway, like, yeah, I was, I was going to these competitions, and then they were like, yeah, we got denied care in like some country, like, because th- th- there's just no one traveling with them, like, like taking care of them. And I'm like, yeah, oh, 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 this isn't okay. And and I do want to say that's like no one's fault. Like, skateboarding's never been in the Olympics before. Yeah. Everyone at the top is doing their best fucking job they could possibly do. I can say that because I work with them directly now. They're doing their best, but it's like there's not a lot of budget. It's never been done. It's skaters running it. So like there's a lot of like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, no, yeah. no, no. This is how this works. Like this is how like a medical staff should be set up. This is what you need. And so right now everyone's doing their best, but uh, in traveling there, that's when I got connected with Mimi Noop and then Josh Friedberg. And I came to them being like, same thing. There comes that persistence. I wouldn't stop emailing. I was like, you need this. <laughs> and I want to be the person to help. And um, so I finally got a meeting with them and then was able to present my expertise and then also what I think would be beneficial for the team. Um, and then they tested me out. They took me to Rio to be like, let's see how this works and like what we can do. And then they were like, yeah, our team. At that point, then I had been working with an array of athletes on. I had started working with Mariah Duran and I had worked with Jake Gallardi and Deshaun and so I already had that trust of a lot of their athletes as well so they were like oh okay like from a medical standpoint you're the best person and from an athlete trust so then it just seamlessly kind of happened and now I've been training them um for the last however many months now which has been like really really cool um yeah that's amazing dude it's It's incredible it's it's all I want to do that's all I care about and like I think for me it was I see like there's the athletic performance perspective of it where I'm getting to learn completely new modalities. Like it's like I've been in the skateboarding community watching skateboard forever. I understand it. So then I can like look at this, being able to take the two things that I love training. It's like, and skateboarding and watch these two things come together and create new, um, like best practices within skateboarding for skateboarders specifically and make the training for them is like so rewarding from just a coach's standpoint. But then also these are the people I love the most. And most of these athletes come from backgrounds like me in whatever, whatever way. And that was the biggest thing for me is like, if I can, my whole message for my whole life, like training aside is if I can help someone else be okay and understand their body more and be a better, more whole person and look at them from their mental health, their emotional health, their physical health, and all of those things are not separate. And to help them on whatever journey there is, whether they want a gold medal at the Olympics or they just want to be a better person or like whatever their goals are, I love these athletes because I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, fuck, you're like me. You got stuff. And like, can I help you look at that stuff and and be a better, more well-rounded person? So I'm able to do a lot of things I really love right now. I'm like, I'm so beyond grateful. I can't believe I look back on like young Jess and then where I'm sitting now and every day I'm like, I'm alive. I'm here and I'm working with my favorite demographic of humans and I'm doing what I love. Like we're good. I feel like very, very grateful. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. 
I just gosh. love that. Like, th- I just, it's so great that like, it's also like, you're a woman, like that the first, like, of course, right. Cause I've been like in the women's side of skateboarding for so forever now that of course there's going to be someone to come in to actually present practices and ideas that like better themselves like it's gonna be a woman like <laughs> to see where like, it's like so perfect <laughs> yeah because I think a lot of the reason why that never existed for so long was because skateboarding has very much been about protecting this like counterculture community um and from outside influences mm-hmm. so obviously when they announced the Olympics like core skateboarding was angry or whatever so but like the thing is is what people you know, the people that were angry were the ones who didn't understand that by opening it up and sharing it with others who didn't feel included or invited or, you know, were told they couldn't do this, aka like all of us or whoever else, um, that by opening that up, like so much can evolve and like transform mm-hmm. and be better. So things like having a trainer, like at a contest where literally like your life is on the line and like your mm-hmm. entire year's like your career's on the rent line. Yeah. is on the line. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it was just like, of course that, you know, like I, I just love that it, it's you and it makes so much sense. Like your story, like how you even got to your position is such like a skater's mentality of like, it wasn't there. Great. I'm going to build it. I'm going to create it and I'm going to persist and make it happen Mm -hmm. and just keep trying and and failing and, you know, finally succeeding. Mm -hmm. Um, And thanks for that. Um, That's the thing I always tell people. I'm like, just, it's that exactly like fail over and over, get a no, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. I'm going to fucking get it. And I would say with that, like, in what you're talking about with like, you know, people had a lot of feelings around the Olympics. And for me, like the Olympics has actually just been like a side piece, like again, like these things just have happened. And I'm like, Oh wow, this is a need. Like, let me, let me try and help do this. And for me, it's like, I want to be able to help skaters as a whole, like regardless if you're an Olympic athlete or pro athlete, like I want it to be accessible for everyone. And that's always been my goal. And that's always been my dream. And I will continue to do that. And being able to come in, there's two sides that I see when people are upset about the way it's evolving. One, I'm like, it's going to happen anyway. So you can get mad about it and stamp your feet (laughs) all fucking day. But like, what the fuck is that really going to do for anyone? You know what I mean? Like, I look at it as if I, I see the Olympics as an opportunity for maybe there's some skaters that like don't have as many sponsors or just as skilled or like don't have as many big of a following or just as skilled. Like a gold medal could change their life. Like to me, it changes, that could change your life. It could change your family's life, change your pay structure, like completely change your life. And if that can happen for a skater and put them on a world platform and get their story or their voice across, I think that's so powerful. And I think that's so cool. Why and not? yeah. Like that. Why would you not want that? Like, and even, even without a gold medal, the yeah. second they announced that just, shit, everything changed. Yeah. And like, it just was like a pe- the only people that were ang- like, none of the women were angry. Like none of the girls were angry. Like all of a sudden people were like calling, you know, us or the skaters. And it was just like, Oh, now you give a shit. Like what changed? And they're like, Oh, fuck the Olympics. But now we're right. going to call you. And it's like, okay, yeah. what changed? It was the Olympics. So it was yeah. just like, without even if it's not ha- it's not it's being postponed right now right like mm, the fact yeah. that it's not happening <laughs> the announcement from three years ago changed everything like yeah. when prior to that announcement like there was one maybe leticia was the only one getting paid like mm-hmm. as a professional mm-hmm. skateboarder and like many of us even whether you were a skater or you're on the industry sh- side it was like side projects side hustles mm-hmm. it was like none of it was even possible so as soon as they announced the olympics it was like the gatekeepers in the skate industry couldn't keep like protecting it. They didn't have mm-hmm. a choice. It was like outside influence, outside interest. And that was like the best thing that could have happened for the women's yeah. side of things. Like people, yeah. I mean, I tell the story all the time and it's just like, even like street league, like they did, they literally, we met, we met with them. They said, no, thanks. Cause we pitched, we did this whole proposal for like a women's division at street league. And they were like, mm, that's cool. Like we'll see. And then like mm-hmm. radio silence. And then as soon as they announced the Olympics, they like called Mimi and like we all went back in there and had a meeting. Um, and they were just like, yeah, we want women now. And we're like, oh, because of the Olympics? And they're like, no, right. not because of the Olympics. And they're like, <laughs> no, just fucking say it's because of the Olympics. Like, <laughs> try to bullshit us. They're like, we really care. And we're like, no, you don't. But anyway. It's hard. It's hard though. No, I, I feel that. I mean, it's really tough. It's the same it's the same thing in the, you know, strength conditioning world, for instance, like I say, like there's a lot of male strength conditioning coaches that like have this like 
mentality where they have to protect something and hold something. And I, I really think, and I love to see women being able to take a more active role and be taken more seriously and, and be able to make a living off of these, these things within skateboarding. And then as trainers and strength conditioning coaches as well, like for me, I look at that and, um, I think about, how do I put this? I look at it as like, I'm, I always want to be able to bring more people together because I see the way I view people and it may be a detriment sometimes when someone's like reactive or angry or like trying to push someone out, it usually comes from some deeper place for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then same thing with the men. There's a lot of men that like, I don't want to excuse it, but like they have these patriarchal mindsets that they can't even begin to see or understand. Yeah. And for me being a woman, if I can help elevate other women and make them stronger people and make ha them have stronger, more resilient bodies and give them more access, then that's an amazing win for me. And simultaneously though, if I can take any of those men without even trying, without getting angry, with taking emotion aside, like, and be able to, just by being in the role that I'm in, just by being in the position that I'm in and doing what I'm doing, be able to help educate them and dismantle some of that. Um, that's a, also just as big of a win for me. And I think there's two sides to that coin that are so tough. And those are both really important to me. And then when it comes to like corporations, I feel you like I have a deal with corporation my whole life, like no matter what corporation it is. And it's like, you just have, like, it sucks that it takes sometimes something like this. You know what I mean? You're just like, yeah. Huh, now you want to pay attention to me. I feel you. Like, I mean, I've been talking about this forever. and People didn't take me seriously until I had an ISB back in me. And they were like, oh, we want to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, yeah. well, I mean, I'm the same human with the same idea, <laughs> but like, okay. So it can be frustrating. But then again, I'm like, whatever, elevator, like whatever, whatever yeah. can get you talking to me to be able to help me help these humans. That's cool. Like, fuck it. And like, you're going to still go do it on the side anyway. Like, yeah. you can still go make that happen. Still yeah. going to make it happen. Yeah. So it's like anything, I always look at it as a bonus. I'm like, oh, this opens a door for me? Tight. Because I'm still going to do the same thing and preach the same message and just use this as an elevator. And hopefully, like, whatever company is I'm affiliated with actually believes in it. And luckily, Nike does. But, um, you know, it's like a, know yeah, it's like a tipping point phenomenon where, like, people always say, okay, if you really care about something or you're, you know, passionate about something and no one else gives a shit or no one else is doing it. You got to just keep doing it. And you got to like, you know, like share it with other people, recruit other people, invite them in, like, because it's like a numbers game where at mm -hmm. some point, whatever you're doing is going to catch on. Like if you can get more people involved and then there's a tipping point where like, it's enough for people to actually care. So mm -hmm. like, it's so this real. is such an important piece of advice, like for, you know, for both of you guys having like fitness backgrounds and being passionate about like taking care of your body, which is so ironic because it's a contrast to skateboarding. <laughs> skateboarding yeah. is about like <laughs> damaging yeah. your body. I know. And like um, but the fact that you guys both like kept, um, you know, pursuing both of those things in, you know, different times and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. not giving up on it is I think what has you in this unique position and um, able to like blend the two, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people think, oh, well, it doesn't exist. So it's not possible. But if you can just like, you know, remix it in your own way, I, I feel like that's really what the world needs and wants. We don't need more copy paste versions of what it, whatever's out there. It's like we yeah. need more people to like put their own flavor on things yeah. and then share it out. And like then it becomes a thing, you know, which it's is so real. Really and great. I think there's two. It's it's like it's wild because I remember when I started this, like I said, like I've had momentum on this forever but i didn't really like hammer into it until the last four years like the last three years but i remember talking about this in atlanta and my homies back home i love them they're the fucking best but like they'd be like the fuck jess you know the fucking stupid like like yeah. not take it seriously like, no one did same thing even in portland like people would be like oh, okay it's fucking dumb like training jack shit and i yeah, just jocks, was like yeah. i'm not that's not what it is and i'm gonna yeah. prove it to you and like being able to figure out the right language to make them understand and like relate it to what they're doing, I think is important. But also like I tell people, I'm like, whatever it is you want to do, you're not going to like, people are going to laugh at you. People are going to think you're fucking crazy. But if you really believe in it and you know your why as to why you're doing it and you stay the course and you keep going, like you will, you will see fruits of it and it will build into something like whatever it is, like that momentum, that action and that, creation because i'm like to me i'm like it's a no-brainer i used to destroy my body too like heavy hard right for fucking years like 
years. And then I realized like, oh, this is the only body I have. And to me, I'm like, if you love skateboarding and you genuinely want to be able to do it until you're fucking 80, it's not even about like geek performance. Like, do you just want to be able to actually skate till you're 80 years old? Well, here, do these things and you fucking will. Like, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Well, I think that speaks so much to like just your personal narrative, Jess, in terms of like, from the beginning, like as you're telling like your early years of your life and like your path to where you are now, like I just, oh my God, how incredible like your personal, your internal persistence and the development of your persistence and your determination, like even if you didn't have any other, any other voices like telling you what direction to go or where to go next, like so incredible that you were able like somewhere inside of just who you are, like innate part of you, like being this persistence, this determination, even if it was like from a rock bottom place or what have you, the power that I hear in your story of your persistence is like universal and like is so key to like people's success and really what you were talking about earlier, Kim, is like people finding like what is important to you. Like I see that so tied to like your persistence is like you're so clear on what's important to you. And a lot of it came from urgency in your life and your life situation. But I just see that like I am like just sitting over here in awe of that still. And like I just need to speak on that because Mm -hmm. that is so powerful. And like I just, you know, thus far in life, I've come across so many people that have gone through so much stuff and so many obstacles and so much like so many challenges and adversity and they've become some of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life and I think you really speak to that and so I think whether somebody has to it's like the age-old question of like well do people have to go through adversity to become these incredible beings and I don't think that's true at all and I think it really speaks to what you're what like your truth is your story has been around like persistence, but it being so attached to like a why and have that giving you direction and that taking you wherever, wherever you should be at all those moments through that path, you know, whether they're Mm -hmm. negative or positive or what. Um, and it just really shines light on like, there's no way to do this thing called life. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're really rooted in like what's important to you and like really finding like that passion, even if it comes from like ping ponging your way along and like being at a rock bottom or whatever it is like if people can really stay connected to their why and their passion and just like keep going no matter what the people around you say and keep speaking it because I hear also you keep speaking it and finally you found people that were like why aren't you doing it Mel Strong like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, why shout aren't out you to like, Mel. <laughs> seriously yeah so just there's something powerful about continuing to speak it and keep throwing those ideas like that because they keep coming up for you. And then eventually like those people show up in your life that are like, yeah, why aren't you doing that? And you're like, oh, I don't, okay. Yeah. You know? And so I just like have to speak on that because that is like so powerful and so important. Um, And I think just the culture of skateboarding and the gem that it is like, it is such a treasure. Like there's something so powerful about skateboarding and like, you know, you came to like strength and conditioning that really had you find like parts of you that we learned through like, you know, like traditional parents or like school Mm -hmm. or something, you know, like I think skateboarding teaches a lot of us those sort of like, um, like, those social qualities, you know, whether it's resilience or like, you know, finding a positive outlet or, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody being like, yo, where were you? Like, I haven't seen you forever at the park, you know, like Mm -hmm. there's, those are so, such critical parts of our life and our interaction with other humans. So, Mm -hmm. um, but I think there, it's so valuable to have people like you, um, bringing fitness and bringing like, it's just like well-being and wellness. And I want to be careful to use those words because they're such mm. buzzwords. Yeah. But I just mean that in terms of like, you know, like we're at a time with skateboarding where we're really like turning a tide and really like rewriting the culture, taking all the amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we're take, got we're taking, I got all excited. <laughs> um, we're taking all the the most beautiful parts of skateboarding um, and like the freedom and the joy and the play and the like full self-expression. There's no Mm -hmm. rules to skateboarding, but then there's some toxic parts of it, you know, that we should totally be able to rewrite. And if people want to like hold on to whatever skateboarding is for them, that's nobody can take that from you. So those folks are like, no, no Olympics, blah, like skateboarding is whatever it is for you. Mm -hmm. And people got to remember like no one can take that from you and we're going to keep making it better. Yeah, exactly. I fucking love that. It always has been evolving anyway. So people that have this idea that it's like this one thing, it's like, no, fucking when it was started, it was like a toy that like, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't, it's such a, know, crea- like, yeah, it's such a, it creative, evolved. It evolved. Yeah. And it's like, there's such a creative self-expression and like, 
watching legends for years and years and then watching now these young kids and like seeing the evolution of even like just the level of skateboarding and the oh shit God. that they're trying and shit's fucking insane. Yeah. Um, but I think it's like, again, that's why I'm so passionate about like just helping each person. Like I see such a, you're right. Like skateboarding is so special and that's how we've all found our family and our community, at least for me. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah, I found my passion for my job through training, but I found, you know, you go out and you find these people, like whether it was in my punk scene or my skateboarding scene, like those are the people that you find that you hold on to and you're just like, these are family. Like we have a shared bond and a shared experience because we're in this for a reason. Like it's, yeah. it attracts a certain kind of person and now it's evolving and it can attract anybody. But for a long time, like it attracts a certain type of human to like want to do that. And yeah. And, the, and I think that, you know, the, when it evolves, again, like my biggest message is how do I help you as a person heal? How do I help you as a person grow? Yeah. Because if you can focus on one person's healing or whatever that hate is, whatever that uh, is for them, it's coming from something deeper. And yeah. so if I can help you understand that a little bit more, get in touch with yourself a little bit more, you're going to be able to see someone else's perspective better. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah. that's really important to me. I think like I used to be such a different person. Like I was so fucking like, fuck you, fuck this <laughs> woo woo shit. I don't fucking meditate. Like seriously, if you met me eight years yeah. ago, you'd be like, who the fuck is this chick getting in fights, getting arrested. I've been to jail so many times. Like, I, it, like, and now I can look back and go, oh wow. I was just a hurt human. And so yeah. again, like I look yeah. at this culture within skateboarding, this toxicity or these people and I'm just like, Oh, you're a bunch of hurt humans. Oh yeah. yeah. I really sure. just want to help. Like, uh, let me just like take you and like, uh, secretly, like there's sly ways. I can just like wiggle my way in there and be like, yeah. oh, I'm going to help you heal. But that's why I <laughs> yeah. feel like with, with like so many examples of like skateboarders and, you know, just people is that you have to have lived, you know, all these different pathways and have, have had all these experiences in order to like transform and evolve to mm -hmm. the other end of the spectrum. And I really see that now because skateboarding is like so young as a culture that mm -hmm. as we grow, that there's the opportunity to evolve. And then the next generation gets to benefit from this evolution. Right. Yeah, so yeah. like, I think that <coughs> the average person out there, cause I'm friends with a lot of people who are outside of the skateboarding industry. Yeah. And the biggest difference is that people do not try. They don't take risks. Their, their fear yeah. of failure stops them before they even take that first action. And so what happens is that you train yourself to be that way. Mm -hmm. So then you're 50 or 60 and you've never tried or failed at anything. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's just a distinct experience of life when you're someone who was willing to try, fail, like fall on your face, like be whatever version of yourself that didn't work and then discovering, okay, this doesn't work. Let me evolve and grow. But if you don't even take that first step, like you have no chance of growing. And if you're not yeah. growing, you're just waiting to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Saying, like, you're so right. Totally. It's, it's so like, real. it's so like, crazy. Like, it's just nuts. Like I gave this presentation the other day via zoom and I showed the bail, um, section from quit your day job and it's just all the fucking bales right and it's like it's all girls too right and the people's react and these are like you know middle-aged you know people who have no i'm sure they don't regularly you know they're not cruising instagram and seeing stuff and they were just like so shocked and like like deeply impacted by what comes up when you see someone like eat shit or like on you know, like, on rail yeah. over like over bounce. yeah or like there's blood and like yeah. skaters are like stoked they're like oh, i'll get this on film um <laughs> so it's just such a distinct way to live and i just love that you know like you are someone who's lived that and also you're able to take everything that you went through and like transform it into this like amazing skill to then contribute to others um and i think that's also just such a like a quality that's I don't want to like put boxes and stereotype but generally we see women having like this empathetic quality where you're able to take whatever it is and like help someone else and I think that's just amazing that you're doing that not only for yourself but like for this next generation like yeah. the Mariahs and the Samarias and like that generation as they started coming up I was like these are like so amazing types of people that like I'm stoked and proud to say like, these are the representatives of our 
culture, activity, yeah. sport, whatever the fuck you want to call it, because they just demonstrate like so much, like, I don't know, like being able to be like a, a human to the fullest. Oh, they're know? the strongest yeah, like, women. I swear. Like, I think like, I feel very honored to even, well, one, I, yeah, I, I feel uh, that was my biggest duty is I like went through all this shit. I went through all this shit. I've had so many experiences. Some of the stories are really funny and gnarly and wild and some are not. And like, I've had so much life experience up until this point. And I'm like, what could I do with this? Like, I happen to be a person. Not everyone has had these experiences or seen what I'm seeing. So I'm like, well, how do I use it? Okay, that means I have a really good lens to be able to just see people and like see different types of personalities and like needs and like pain. But also like working with skaters, like you're saying, they're the gnarliest, grittiest motherfuckers on the earth. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's the sickest thing ever. That's what people don't understand. Even other performance coaches are like, why are you so passionate about skateboarders? And obviously I've talked about like my deeper why and like this love that I have for them, the community, but also like, I'm like, oh, you want to see a fucking football player eat shit on some turf? Uh, yeah. Let me show you something else. Like, let me show you some <laughs> other fucking shit. Let me show you some slams. 50 of them before yeah. we fucking even land whatever we're supposed to land that impact like and it's just like a whole different like whole different again why the physical piece is so important but yeah. like also like they're the gnarliest greatest people on the earth and then to be able to have I feel so honored to be able to work with all of these women coming up in skateboarding they are incredible humans number one they have some of the biggest hearts i've ever seen they are grounded human beings they are going to be incredible leaders and they are fucking talented as skateboarders and it is so cool to see and like be able to have a hand in that and just to be a part of that i feel honored because i look at them i always say like my role is background and i just want to be able to be there and watch you fucking shine like if i can help you shine harder yeah. fuck yeah i did my job like yeah, yeah. they're so cool like, also, the yeah. most successful ones, they're so humble. Like, if you think all of them, totally. like Mariah, Samaria, Leo, they're so humble. Oh, God, so humble. Yeah. Yeah. So then modest. They get out and, like, get on their board and, be, like, have the confidence that it takes to, like, do the gnarly, like, land a gnarly trick or whatever. Oh, yeah. I want to know who, like, in terms of training-wise, like, who is, like, easy to coach? Who's, like, coaching? <laughs> like, oh, my God. I know Samaria and Mariah both played basketball when they were younger. Like, <laughs> they actually, I, yeah. <laughs> It's but funny. what about do you work with Alexis? I'm gonna call. Alexis. Yeah. Oh my. How is God. Alexis? I want to know. Like, break it down. Who's the best, who's the best <laughs> no. Okay. I can't. I can't. There's. Oh God. I'll say this. They can, we'll have them on the show. They can. You know. Yeah. Like, and then they can rebuttal. I love Alexis. That bitch slams harder than I watch her slam dude. sometimes. Oh my like, God. Oh, like, do you see Tampa? Did you all dude, see dude, dude, Tampa? Dude. Don't, uh, yes. Alexis fall at Tampa? I did not watch oh, it. Oh my goodness. That's my one thing. I'm like, let me just help you. Ba can you bail? Like, let's. Yeah. Can we? roll like fuck yeah. her like jeans are made of some oh. other like <laughs> her jeans. Bionic she jeans. really Something does else. and then she's over here like vegan and all this shit and i'm just like how i know do you, how do you function i don't i don't know she's an anomaly she's, she's an super human. yeah she's, she's like super not super a human, human. Holy yeah shit. supernatural um, she would like yeah i just that's a whole nother story like yeah. I, uh, but that's crazy. But, like, I don't even, understand like, her as it's a human. crazy like I would say Mariah and fucking uh Samaria are really easy to coach and a lot of people are really easy to coach now um and Alana um but they're like it, it's funny actually skateboarders when you get them off their board are some of the most Uncoordinated. clumsy okay so crazy <laughs> because well here's the thing where i like to nerd out on is skateboarding is such a multi-directional sport if you yes. want to call it a sport most other sports are very like linear yes. that's why skateboarding is like if you're like a trainer like i feel like you should be like oh what yeah <sighs> like you know mind blown in terms of movement patterns and uh -huh. goofy regular like you're we talking about so anyways style but, dance like the way you move like it's yeah fucking, it's really safe do you feel like they're clumsy because they've they're they're used to having a tool like a vehicle without your board like, you're like a fish out of water you know it's so yeah. the realest thing ever so it's like we'll do it's wild because like i say like i watch all of them do what they do and i'm just like fuck yeah you're so skilled like look, it's insane and then the second you take them off that piece of wood, <laughs> bro, I'm like, and they, luckily they can laugh about it. Like I usually make it really fun, but like, we're talking basic coordination. Yeah. We're talking like marches, like stand, they're like, uh, 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 like can't, you know what I mean? And then, and they like, so it's like, okay, we have to start linear and get them like yeah. just moving. And then, but obviously like multi-directional, like different, that's like so vital, but it's like, okay, let's just nail basics. Yeah. Let's nail this basic. And it's cool though, to watch them develop. Cause I'm like, 
being able to help them understand the why I'm big with my whatever athlete I'm working with. Like if I can educate you and you're as smart as me and you understand why you're doing what you're doing, then you're going to be better off. I want you to not need me one day. Um, because then, then it's like, Oh, this is going to help this because of this. Like this is going to increase my pop because of this. This is coordination. This way. Yeah. It's a body like you were talking about, like, like big time. And then you get it. And then you're like, Oh, I'm going to do this. Cause now I, now I understand mechanically, like why this works, why this is important. This makes sense to me. Um, But there to go back to that, I don't say they're all great. Like they're all great and they're, 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 but it took uh, some base building. I'll say that. <laughs> For all of them? Even with you the guys base. who, base building. Like, like I would, <laughs> well, yeah. like, I'm just like, do they even own like shoes that aren't skate shoes? Probably not to begin yeah, with. But they can, I tell them, I'm like, you should train in your skate shoes. What else yeah. are you going to wear? Why would you totally. change your, why would you That's change true. your footwear? Like, you know, cause you're in it. So it's like, you know, but there's things like that where it's like, um, like being able to be like, no, I want you on that. I want you to be able to do, I want you in your, and you just wear your skate shoes. So they're like doing squats and dickies or what? (laughs) (laughs) They can't, I get them in like training shorts because that was the thing, but they would. I remember, who was it? Carlos brought his homie from uh, Brazil the other day. Uh, and it was really cute because uh, he just like brought him and I was like fuck yeah let's go but yeah he was in like some dickies and whatever and it, like he did great but he was and he loved it it was cool though as he like went back to Brazil and told Carlos he's like I'm gonna start this here like I'm gonna start training here because wow. I really like that but, like you know like that's my whole thing is I want to make it accessible like my dream my dream one day is to be able <laughs> to have a gym that feels more like a skate shop and yeah. to have a like you know like it's like I want there to be able Accessible. to be a park and bowls oh my and god and then also it's getting it feels so like excited over. right like I will build it one day I don't know how or when it's gonna or happen where. in the we bay will. it's so gonna you happen to it's gonna totally way. Way. So you're gonna go from LA to the <laughs> I know bay. I know yeah. all right like, be ready. but I want that shit like because it's like I want it to not be I don't want you to feel out of your environment like yeah it doesn't yeah. have to be it can be its own fucking thing and there's ways to train the body specifically for skateboarding it's completely different than anything else I mean there's same similar protocols obviously there's your right. basic strength conditioning rules but like there's also nuances that like yeah. you're like ooh, this would this would make sense yeah and so but they they move i don't know like alexis is just funny because alexis is like number one eye roll but i even got her doing some shit. she's number one like classic yeah, anything but- you tell her to do because i'm i used to be like be like i need to take this picture of you and she's like uh. yeah, <laughs> she's so like, good now like she just she does all these interviews now like rolling stone I don't know. So yeah. awesome. Fucking but, shout out to Alexa. But that's just but a like, classic skateboarder. Like, they don't want to be told what to do. Like, that's why they skateboarded back then, mm-hmm. especially because she's older, you know? And that's why it takes people, in my opinion, from the community. And that's why Mel was like, you're the person because it's yeah. Like, yeah. I can fucking show yeah. with you. I can speak your language. You got to relate. I know what the fuck you're talking about. I know you. And now let me explain to you and make this accessible to you to show you why this isn't a jock shit. Yeah. And they're doing it. And yeah. I think like, it's like my girls did. The girls were automatically into it, of course, because we're yeah. fucking women. We get it. Honestly, there was like not a lot of pushback from my women. Like, yeah. they were like, fuck yeah, let's go. Like, Mariah was on board immediately. Yeah. It's Maria, Alana, even Alexa. Like, you know, li- like literally like e- e- they, that was no problem. My hardest sells was my dudes. dudes. Deshaun yeah. was no problem. But now it's like working with Sean, Deshaun and Jake and Carlos and Malto and people like that. Yeah. It was it's been hard and I shod now and I like, but I'm working, but that was my thing is I'm like, let me take down this mindset, get yeah. you in here. And yeah. now everyone's training together and there's these walls being broken down and it's like, we could take that cool guy shit off and just fucking so do this important. shit. Yeah. It's cool. So it's so radical that you are that person just to reiterate that again, like so it, can, it wouldn't so work radical. with anyone else. It wouldn't. It you really can just wouldn't. take some like top trainer person and have them do that and be effective like there's no way like the whole no, thing about, i think about the whole thing about I the culture it. is like you to have the understanding like hey you're huge. You're, you're one of us you know you yeah. gotta get it yeah. i tell that because somebody what was it they're like oh just i don't know there's something happening where they're like oh just get one of your colleagues to do it and i was like not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, i love my fucking some of my like other strength conditioning coaches but if they came in there they'd be like okay fucking, yeah yeah it work no yeah. like no 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 so I well feel, i'm just I feel so honored. i'm so glad that you're working with uh the women and the men too and like i we've talked about this before jessica but how important like 
men are just a part, as much a part of this work too, right? And like mm -hmm. could benefit from it too. So I think it's just so rad. One, that you're working with them. Two, that you have them all working together. And I really think skaters and skateboarding is like such an, it's an easier like access point to bring people together because there's like this common bond in skateboarding. And I think it's a lot of things. I think it's like, yes, the resilience it takes, but there's something about like we talked about, like it takes a very specific human to like be drawn to skateboarding and to be mm -hmm. take skateboarding to that level. So it's mm -hmm. just so powerful. And once again, like I'm just so grateful that they put you in that position and you with like the all the the paths that you've taken to get here and your knowledge and your sort of lens in which you connect mental and physical health into these folks training and you get that like everybody has something they're dealing with and something that they are can potentially heal from you know so mm -hmm. i'm just like so grateful that they put you I in am, that position i am too dude <laughs> i'm like so grateful yeah. i care about i care about each one of these people so much and like yeah. again like i said my goal is to elevate the women and then also elevate the men and then bring them together and like yeah. what the beautiful thing about training one skateboarding like it should be and taking those mindsets down like some of that old mindset that like not that non-growth and like women not being able to be a part of this like that's starting to shed away and yeah. and what my space uh, my space in this does is like being able to take the ego away or take some of those ideas away and like okay so maybe at the skate like you know what i mean like i feel like skateboarding in general attracts a certain type of person so that puts you you're the same doesn't matter how you identify like you're the same you're coming into this but also like in the weight room, like, and being able to take that down and humanize each other and work together as a team. Um, I didn't know if it was going to work, but it does. And it shows like, it's just like takes the, everyone's in there together. And I was like, ah! like, so I was cool. like, so, you know, it took a while and it took, so it takes a lot, but it like, I was like, it's working, it's working. So, so I, awesome. I feel very honored and very grateful. And like, all I want to be able to do is help each individual shine bigger and be better and then be able to take care of them because I get really attached. Like I love them. Like yeah. I like they all have their own little book and their own little file and like checking in on them and understanding them. Like I fucking give a shit. I'm like that's well, what it should be. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's what you have to exactly like, like, how it should be. Yeah. Like your my your your career, your life, your body is in my hands. So I'm gonna make sure that every day I'm bettering myself to help you. you yeah. Know? And that's going to make people feel seen and know that they matter. And whether it's conscious or subconscious, you know, mm -hmm. like you pull out their individual book and you are taking notes, that says something. Mm -hmm. Like that tells them something, you know, like whether we know it or not, but it's so, and I, I get that you're very clear on that and you're intentional mm -hmm. about it, but it's just so important. And there's yeah. so many parts, especially early in our life where we maybe don't see that or feel that or experience that. And so it's so crucial that like we continue to like, we're just big kids, you know? I know. I want people to just be seen like, Hey, I see yeah. you. I, yeah. that's my biggest thing. And you like, matter, you, you know? matter like, and what you're doing it. matters and whatever you want to do and whoever you want to become matters and you can. Yes. Like, I wish I had so many more people in my life. Like now I've been so lucky. I have tons of strength coaches and mentors. Like I've had men and women pull me up and like now in my life, I feel so supported and I feel so so grateful but when I was younger I didn't and I didn't understand and I really wish I would have had that so now if it's like I can just be like hey you got you fucking got this like and you yeah. need to know why okay so I have a question so going back to like the earlier parts of life before you had all that you have now um you know in those moments where you were a rock bottom or you kind of went down a path and hit a wall and then figured out how to like turn around like what do you think it was that had you be able to like redirect and not just like god knows what would have happened yeah. but that's yeah. what i'm really curious about because i know it's different for everyone but at the same time like we're all humans and there's got to be some sort of common thing and I'm just like it's super intriguing to me because a lot of what we're talking about on the show is how do people turn it around because a lot yeah. of people don't turn yeah. it around and if you yeah. didn't you wouldn't be here talking to you right now you know so what do you think it was was it something you had in you was it some external factor like is there anything that you can think of that you can attribute to like why you, each time you hit a wall you were able to like figure out the next direction to go in yeah I don't know. I mean, that's such a good question. I've actually thought about that myself a lot. I'm like, I don't know how I got out of this sometimes. Um, I, 
I would say I have always somehow been able to stay like happy, like that resilience. That's something about myself that I'm like, okay, I do have resilience and I don't know where that comes from or like what part of me pulls, like pulls myself back up. Um, each time, uh, I've hit those rock bottom points, but it, yeah, I, I genuinely, I don't know. I, one, I think there's always been like, you have to look for the signs sometimes, I think too, like in, in being, um, how do I put this? Like, I can't remember specific ones, but I'm sure like there was like, like the universe look, telling you something. Yeah. The like I, I, <laughs> you got to believe in that shit. Like, man, I didn't want to look at that shit for so long. I was like, fuck everybody. And it was so gnarly, but like the universe always does give you signs and always does give you an olive branch or a leaf and like a, a way to like be like, just keep going. Like it's just something inside of me that always just said like, you have to keep going. And I have been low, you know, but somehow just like, okay, okay, you got to get up. You got to try like, um, and it, and it'll, and it'll happen. And I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I honestly don't like, but I, I can think back to those moments and just being like, you know, and I feel like people have to give themselves grace too. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I didn't for so long, I get so mad at myself, but you have to remember like, you come into this world and you are thrust into a family or a situation that you didn't get to choose and you don't know what that's going to be. It could be great. It could not. Um, and you, and so it's like, and you've learned habits, like you learn these things growing up and you learn these patterns and you get these messages and inputs from wherever. And then once you become a whole person and an adult and you get to make your own choices, it takes a long time to re-unwind those. Like I yeah. still fall. I had a fucking gnarly Sunday. I had a super bad mental health day and like had to struggle through some shit. And it's like just giving yourself grace and permission to be able to fall and be like, all right, I fell again. Let's get back up. Let's try again. And I would implore people, which I didn't do, but I don't know if this makes sense, but to reach out when you do. Yeah. Like people you may look up to in your community and like be – you know, feel okay to be like, I'm fucking struggling. I'm fucking up. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to get in front of this and like, let them help you. Like I didn't yeah. let anyone help me for Lifeline. so long, dude. And now I'm like, I got hella lifelines and I'm like, Oh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm like, what's up, what's up, what's up? Speed dial. Yeah. Like, and I don't mind being vulnerable and I don't mind sharing, but man, when I was younger, I did, I had so much pride and felt like I needed to carry everything myself yeah. and yeah, I don't know if that answers. The I question. Think yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. There's not like a right answer. Yeah, you know? I don't but know. Do you feel like when you're in your like early 20s and your brain is still developing, literally, like you're just, it's like so, you're like you're so alone. Like, I don't know if, if it's mm -hmm. like you feel it, like you're so young that you don't understand the context of life. Yeah. But you feel like you have to have it all figured out. And you definitely don't because you're still young. Like, you haven't lived that much life yeah. yet. But there's mm -hmm. something about like that was my experience too. Like in my early 20s, I felt like I had to have it all together and have all the answers mm -hmm. and have everything be perfect. And I definitely didn't. But there, uh, there was no experience of speaking to people about it. It was just like, yeah. fine, well, I guess. Like I got to figure it out, you know? And I think, I don't know if that's a. Yeah, I think I totally. If, or, yeah, like if it's like a general shared experience, but probably like you get to this yeah. age and you think, I think when you're in your young 20s, I never want to like, 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 dis you know any like put anyone yeah. like oh ageism. you're young i hate <laughs> yeah. that shit ageism. but like yeah. i ageism i joke about it because like i'm get i'm getting closer to 30 so i'll joke about it but like i everyone's on the same playing field but i will say like one your brain doesn't finish developing till you're 25 yeah. what right. the fuck so yeah. like give yourself some space that's a real yeah. thing and trust me after i turned like i remember after i hit yeah. 25 like some i was like oh uh, and, like, I've so arrived. Like, I agree. Some, I've arrived. I agree. like oh my god my yeah. brain like and, and but something about like when you hit your 20s, like now you have to like, it's like this whole adult like struggle thing and you have to have it be all together. And I remember for a long time though, I did struggle with, it's not like I've always just been like, fuck yeah, I get it. Like I would, I, there were lots of times where I would not create things or not do things or not have the confidence to like follow through with things. Cause I felt like I had to have it perfect. Or I felt yeah. like mm -hmm. I had to like have it figured out and then take action. And one of my coaches and mentors, his name is Brian Nunez. He literally said, what did he say? Uh, he calls it analysis paralysis. Like you get yeah. stuck in analysis paralysis. Yeah. I'm sure y'all are very familiar with this. Yep. And it's just like, it, and it, it's just like, just do it. Just go you for it. Yeah. And, yeah. and I always say go full speed with whatever it is too. Like, because you like it, plan A, if you just stick to plan A, even if plan A doesn't work out from plan A, there will be a plan B. Like you don't need yeah. to have a plan B. Like it, it'll yeah. happen. Like it'll just like, 
that energy will create. But I think like, yeah, in your early twenties, you feel like you need to like know it all. Yeah. And, and I like, but you don't, fuck you don't, man. Like, yeah. Just, or like, yeah. is it the right decision? Is it the right, but is that the right choice? Yeah. And I think something I was totally like that in my twenties, mm-hmm. I felt like I was like looking for something and so passionate and determined. And what I was looking for was like right here. And mm-hmm. I wish I would have enjoyed the ride a little bit more yeah. the process um, and just trusted the process. And I like hearing like me say that now, my like 21 year old <laughs> self is so annoyed with me I saying know. that right now. Like, <laughs> like, like I want to be at the destination because I'm just, like yeah. such passionate, <laughs> determined, like, uh, you Same. know, but I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. So I think something that that like has helped me along the way is like remembering that like if I don't change what I'm doing I'm gonna and expect a different result like that's just insane yeah. right yeah. so mm-hmm. just trying something different then mm-hmm. you know or yeah just going for it if it's from a place of like your why and like a love of it and then like moving forward from there and like yeah. you just said like let the universe like really trust it as like woo woo or whatever like comes up when people say like trust the universe Mm -hmm. or trust the process like that's all we have like that's all you can do you you only have now and I like I literally I was so that way as well like once I was like momentum and nike and i have to get these ties and then getting attached to titles as well is yeah. a big one too like the early fa- or the early success is like a killer oh yeah it's a killer i see that a lot and i'm like it's it's one of those things where it's like your life will change so many times and i used to hate i still struggle with change because i introvert extrovert and trust like when i don't li- i like being comfortable and so when <laughs> things like change without my consent I don't like that shit. No one does. I'm like, ah. <laughs> but the reality is, is like, we're not in control. And so being able to put action behind, how do I put this? Like take steps towards what you want. Make sure that your why is clear in the sense that like, is it coming from a heart place? Cause trust me when it's not coming from a heart place, I feel like you come up. My experience has been, I come up against things that like didn't yeah. work. You know what I mean? And then once I started like really stepping into like what I fucking cared about, shit just started happening, started yeah. opening. Like it creates that action and momentum. And then it's like not getting attached to the way things are. Cause like y'all know this is you're going to change and develop so many different times and trusting that like, as long as you're taking steps to better yourself in whatever way and, and, do whatever it is that makes you happy or that you're passionate about, then those like that change will be a good thing. And like, you can handle it. You know what I mean? Like, cause I say, I, I had to really learn how to start enjoying the ride. Cause shit changes even like now. I mean, yeah. fuck. Like, yeah. I, yeah, exactly. It was going Olympics. really great. And <laughs> then I literally like everything was tight and I was so busy. And then life was just like, Bam. And I was like, oh, I have no control over this. And you're yeah. going to have to learn how to pivot and be okay with it. And yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Like, it just is an example. I feel like that's life, though. Like, sometimes yeah. it's like you can have this amazing plan. Yeah. I what do you guys? Like- oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like when I've gotten to a place where I like have really started to understand that, like, there's got to be some sort of gift on the other side of that, you know? And I know we talked about that the other day, Jessica, yeah. but like just understanding when things totally take a turn, like one, recognize like, do I have control over it or do I not? And mm-hmm. if you don't, like how much energy do you want to spend on like not having control over that? And then like, where can we look for like, what is the opportunity in this? Yeah. Um, because that's, yeah, that's all we can really do. And again, if you really do just, just trust the process, mm-hmm. um, like then that's all there is to do trust yeah. and look for the opportunity and start making moves in that direction. So yeah. real. And I think mm-hmm. like, I remember just, this is like just something I thought about even in my healing. I remember <laughs> when I started to do more self-work one, it developed me, even my own self-work developed me as like a better person, a better coach, like uh, other things professionally, like yeah. everything else, my organizational skills, like in dealing with that stuff, that stuff also got better. Mm-hmm. And, but I, and that's a that's a big piece. Like, if you, I really want people to understand. Like, if you deal with that stuff too, like not just the outside but the inside, like that also affects those like day to day skills. And um, but I I remember when I first started, it, I'm like, okay, so like we do this, and then I'm good. Like I, I we got uh, <laughs> and we're gonna I'm gonna do this therapy thing, and then I'm gonna like you know like journal and like we're tight. Right? It's like <laughs> all I, like I was so just like mm, good now. Um, but it's like such an ever unfolding process, and you're always yeah. learning something about yourself, and you're always gonna hit highs and lows. Like I still struggle with the same 
patterns or like things that I struggle with or pain that I struggle with, but I now have better tools to get in front of it. It's just yeah. like training. Like you, you literally yeah, like the build these you consistent over time. You will see the results. Like we know mm. that with training your body, progressive overload over time, like that's what creates results. That's what makes you stronger. That's what makes you more resilient. Like those are what creates those adaptations to make you a stronger body. Yeah. It's also the same in any right. other aspect of life, just right. like little bits one at a time, just yeah. keep going, just keep doing it and you will see it. It doesn't have yeah. to be like a big bite, you know? Yeah. Well, you talk about like self organ like the inside. It's like your brain is a muscle just like your hamstring. Yeah, man. Right? So like, uh, I'm curious, like what are some examples for you um, when you talk about the inside, like what, what you said, therapy or like, do you meditate? Like, I'm just yeah. curious because oh. everyone has different <laughs> forms. Yes. Um, yeah. What do you do I think, and what do you recommend? Uh, well, training, well, obviously training for me, uh, I've had to develop a different relationship with training. As I explained, like when I first started yeah. training, well, I was a young trainer, so I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, <laughs> but like now, at, now being an educated uh, person, but also like changing my relationship with what training was and how I use it and keeping my body healthy and using it as a healthy tool. That's number one. I, I movement is so key. Like in, and we know this even with skateboarding, like that's why you get that. Like you want to go out and move, you want to feel good and it helps you, your mental state. It helps your physical state. Like it's all around a good choice. So movement number one is always going to be the thing that I preach. And it does again, little bits, like start with stretching and then move on to some strengthening and what have you. Um, and then, um, meditation is a big one for me in having PTSD. I was not open to it, man. When I started <laughs> therapy, she was like, you have to, you have to do a meditation routine to work with me. I remember she said that and I was like, so many. I was not you did the Alexis eye roll. Oh, heavy inside. Like I was open. Luckily I was, you have to be open to the work. So I was like, at that time, I'm like, fuck, if I don't do something like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like what else yeah. do I have to lose? I'm going to lose everything. But I did not want to. Um, and now I'm like such an advocate because I had to learn, like for me, meditation and breath work is so key. One in, it's not what you think. It is not woo-woo. It literally is just learning how to pause and not have thought or not attach to thought. Second part of that though is like deep belly breathing. We know that that bundle of nerves behind your diaphragm, like when you do and perform deep belly breathing, that vagal nerve calms your nervous system down. It literally calms your nervous system down. So we know that that action creates a physical response that helps you be calmer and relax. And man, I won't say I like one of my skaters – Bless him. Like I, it was someone that I never would have thought would have taken this, uh, would have taken this piece of advice. And I was like, just try belly breathing. I always start my work with belly breathing to end. And they were like, I did that the other day. And I was like, what did you do? And they were like, oh, I was like, had to film this part in this thing. And I was like super nervous, but I didn't want to tell anyone. So I like, walked away and I did. And I was, and I was okay. And like real, and I was like, yeah. Yes. Like uh, I was like, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I was like, sick. But You're like, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, like inside. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think awesome. uh, meditation is a huge one. Like, if I could, if there's one thing you start, it's like deep belly breathing, getting still with yourself, being able to clear thought. Um, Can you help. recommend, like, so for, say there's someone out there listening that has zero, <laughs> like, what do you recommend? What are some easy steps? Is there like a book, a podcast like a whatever app well, like or I just like one thing one practice like if i have zero you know yeah i experience. would say i one thing with well with the meditation practice one it's like just even starting the simple act of breathing on your own um like what does that mean? your hand like <laughs> laying down putting okay. your hands on your belly one hand on your belly one hand on your chest around your waist um being able to find a focus point on the ceiling or whatever like whether you want to lay down or sit up whatever's more comfortable being able to practice like inhaling on a four count, pause for a second at the top, exhale on a six count. And I always tell people to do the counting because I, if you're like me, my brain, thoughts, my brain, yeah. like brrr, everyone, like your brain is out here just, just attaching all kinds of shit. So people get frustrated because they're like, I can't turn my brain off. Well, it takes practice and it takes focusing, like having another focal point as well. Otherwise my brain floats away in meditation all the time. It's not, again, you don't have to be perfect. You're not just going to like, brrr, clear your brain. Yeah. Um, you've never done this. So I, I like to give counts because it helps you stay focused because you're focusing on a count. So I would say like, you don't have access to anything. One starting there 
and, you know, practicing 10 breaths a morning or five breaths a morning or at night. Um, and then as far as apps, I like guided meditation. I don't really meditate on my own and go into a zone. I always use a guided thing because again, like having that, um, whether it's in person and going to a class or whether it's a, an app, it brings some, me like back. some structure to it. Yeah, because you need to be taught. Like there's like a lot of tools you to be, to be able to have and like noting techniques and being like, oh, um, like one of the best practices I got from Headspace, which is my favorite app uh, to use, is noting. And so when a thought comes up and you get lost in it for a second, was that thinking or feeling? Identify it, come back to the breath. Okay, thinking feeling, you know what I mean? Like an emotional come mm -hmm. up. I'm like, oh, like sometimes when I meditate, like I won't realize I'm just going, going, going through my life. And then when I finally make myself sit down and do it, cause I'll still avoid it too. Like I'm right. not perfect. I love it. But like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't do it. um, but then I'll realize like I'm upset. Like I finally got still in my body and oh fuck, I'm upset. Yeah. And I need to just mm -hmm. have a good cry right now. Like a yeah. big one. Yeah. Um, and I was totally not aware of that and avoiding it. And maybe like doing self-destructive habits to avoid those feelings. So meditation is one of the biggest tools, I would say, number one, um, that you could start anywhere, anytime. Headspace is a great app. There's another app called Breathe, which I think is free, um, or Breath. I don't know which one it is, but it's a great app as well, really accessible, easy to use. Is that like a guided version of what mm -hmm. you're saying? Like, Yeah, counting? Headspace I love. Like that's one of my favorite, but they're the same. They'll, they'll, it's like 10 and it's accessible too because it's not like an hour. Like There's no minutes. all music. It's a couple yeah. minutes and it's just like, hey, we're going to do this now. You're going to take a minute for yourself. <laughs> like it's like so much more accessible yeah. because it's not super like, um, like whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. just truly like, you're going to take a minute for yourself and let's just like do some breath work. And again, I tell people to use it like a, vitamin and not an antibiotic so again mm, like with training like good. over time thanks dude that's broken. <laughs> over, over time it's like you <laughs> write that shit down yeah like it, you can't um you can't don't become dependent it. on it yeah well not even that like it, okay let's say if i have a like, panic attack let's say if you're someone that's prone to panic attacks and i'm like oh breathe. fuck i'm just gonna use my my headspace to fix it yeah, instead yeah. if you use it like a vitamin like take it every day to try and prevent sickness or prevent that feeling yeah. it's yeah. gonna not help to you fix yeah not to fix it like that's yeah. not how it works it's like yeah. you have to over time use it consistently and then you'll notice i'm less reactive i'm less right. anxiety yeah. ridden whatever well preventative um, work like we were talking about earlier right yeah. yeah when i think so valuable is like to me it's like exercising the muscle i like to call awareness yeah in this day and age like we're thinking about yesterday and tomorrow and what i'm going to do a little bit later like we're mm -hmm. never always right here mm -hmm. and i think like you said we with those things that are deeply deep down inside that maybe we need to heal or that we haven't dealt with like those that's what's going through your head in those moments where you're like I can't I can't get my head out of the way like your mind is trying to let you know like yo we need to deal with this yeah like we're feeling, so like, feeling something thinking, else. like yeah so <laughs> I think just the practice of being able to bring your awareness to things is that mm -hmm. first flex yeah. of that muscle right big but, time I yeah. totally agree so I think that's huge and so movement of some kind whether that's skating whether that's training whether that's both uh meditation is a big one and then when and if you're open to it I never want to push uh, therapy on anyone. Cause I think when I was a kid, I was actually really resistant to it. Once again, if you had met me eight years ago, uh, I would have told you therapy's fucking stupid. And that, that like, it's, I, I would have just right, ripped you a new one. Cause I had to do it when I was a kid and I hated it. And like, it, it was like more forced upon me. And so I say this with a caveat to when you're ready and when you're open cognitive behavioral therapy and like trauma therapy specifically for me was the best thing I ever did for my, in my life. That woman, Gillian in Portland saved my life. Like genuinely, I never would have learned about what was going on in my body. I don't know that I ever would have known that I had PTSD. I never would have been able to come in and have a guiding presence, you know, grounding me through processing a lot of heavy shit. Um, yeah and getting in front of my own self-destructive patterns. Um, I believe everyone should be in therapy and that it shouldn't be so taboo and that we shouldn't have some you know, ideas around it, but you have to be open to it or it's not gonna work. Like that's kind of the thing. If you're not ready for it to receive and to try yeah. things like for me that I wouldn't have normally tried, yeah. um, I wouldn't have done it because it was like, this is fucking stupid. But I was like, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Okay. You think it's stupid, but guess what? This woman knows more than you. So you should probably just listen and like try. And it changed my life. Like it changed the way that I do everything. And so if you have the ability to go to therapy and also 
I feel like society puts a lot of ideas around what therapy is, which pisses me the fuck off because it's not, she was like, I, I had to go, I went to multiple ones. That was advice mm-hmm. I got too, was like, okay, this person didn't work for you. That's cool. You didn't vibe with them. You know, humans connect with different humans. And so being able to have someone that's going to be someone that can help guide you, but someone that you trust to be same as a coach, right? It's yeah, it's not every person is going to be the right coach for you. Yeah, exactly. And so I think making sure that, um, you know, you like that I, I tell everyone to get in therapy in some kind, like whether that's more like somatic body stuff, like, or if it's more, you know, cognitive, but like, again, that consistency over time, you will see, like, it's not just a place to go like dump your shit and then leave. Like, yeah. ho- hopefully like you're actually yeah. doing work. It's again, like with training, like, um, if you're do like there's, I'm in there for an hour a week. So what am I doing with all the rest of the hours? It's the same thing when people come train. They're like, oh, I saw, I only want to see you once a week. I'm like, for real? Because that means you're going to need to do more consistent stuff over the next however many hours in the week. So making sure that you're able to, then I would take what she gave me, take it seriously and and do it, you know, and try to put it into practice into my life. So, but the two most successful in movement and meditation. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I just love the idea of like you, it's like, I'm such an advocate for, you know, this idea of like you said, okay, vitamins instead of antibiotics. Cause like, if you look at things from like, there's something wrong, I need to fix it. Then it is finite. It's like, okay, one and done, check the box. I'm good. Like yeah. I went to this thing, I'm, I'm done. But if you look at it from a standpoint of there's nothing wrong, like there's nothing to fix. And what can I do to like elevate and enhance and better ongoingly, then it's a whole different perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think what's so interesting is that people understand that physically, like for the most part, people get that you should exercise, Mm -hmm. you, you know, should get your heart rate up X times, whatever a week or whatever it is. Right. They get that, that you should put things in your body that are going to um, make it better. Um, but for whatever reason in our generation, I think that's starting to shift now, like from a mental perspective, that's not anyone, anything anyone ever talked about. So it's Mm -hmm. like, sure. Like going to the gym a few times a week is, um, is a common agreement in society, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, you should probably do that or go on a walk or whatever it is. Um, but when it comes to mental health and like the inside stuff that it hasn't been a thing. And I think that as we evolve as humans, right? Like, um, our brains are stimulated in such different ways that that did literally did not exist even in my childhood, which is like not that long ago that if we aren't like actively intentionally putting things in to enhance like the inside, the mental, Mm -hmm. then everything's just gonna, you know, like where it's guaranteed to go is unhealthy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that I'm just so glad and one of the intentions of us having this conversation mm-hmm. and other people we talk to is to be able to just point to how important it is to focus on the inside, you know? And I think yeah. in skaters, a, a common thing is like, I'm just going to skate it out and slam. Yeah. And that's like right. my way of like avoiding, um, which makes you such a great skater because you're willing to slam and take that pain and deal with it in a physical way. But mm-hmm. also like if you can and are willing and see the opportunity to let go of some of those walls and work on the inside, it's just going to make you feel so much better and allow you to continue doing the things that you love. Right. Yeah. I think there's two, I I love that. And that's why I'm glad I'm talking about this because I think there's two points to that. Like there's, you know, one from my experience, I had to learn it backwards. I had the physical activity. I died. I went that path and that's great. Cause it started, you know, it was able to get me to my passion now and like yeah. doing what I'm doing. But like in my personal life, I had to hit another rock bottom where I had to realize like, Oh, I can't just like continue avoiding this by like training and skating. And like, like it's not, it's, it's still yeah. there and it's yeah. still going to rear its head and it's still going to fucking, if I don't, if I've just had to finally be like, fuck, I've done all the other shit and now I have to face it. Like it doesn't go away. And I would love to see more people be open to facing it earlier because like, I don't want to get to 50 and like wasted half my life, you know, not living how I know I can live now. Now I know. And like, I also think that some people think it's going to like take their edge away in skating. It's not, it's only just going to make you live a happier life. It's actually not like I've seen it time and time again. You're still the gritty fucking gnarly human. Like I'm still this gritty ass bitch but I also learned how to like cry yeah. <laughs> like, right, and right, like right, feel yeah. the pain that I needed to feel. Yeah. Um, 
And so, you know, like, and I want people to know that and really be able to, to yeah. not be afraid to, and I think it's scary. Like, I think it's very valid, like, um, feeling scared to face these, these, oh yeah, like, gnarly traumatic moments in our life, whatever yeah. they may be for each person. But like, man, once I realized that all I had to do was face it, feel it, process it, and then let it go, I was like, oh. This is what mental health is like. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, yeah. tight. Like, yeah. yeah. I oh, swear, yeah. I cry more now in my 30s than I did in all the decades <laughs> prior. Like oh, happy yeah. crying too. Like oh, yeah. not oh, just yeah. sad crying, but like oh. commercials or like movies where I'm like, I used, to, I would like the 20 year old version of me would have been like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> so, like so people like, crying cool. at like happy endings uh -huh. in movies. I'm like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. And now I'm like, there's like a commercial oh. on TV, and I'm just like, oh my god. And I cry all the time. <laughs> I cry all the time. I tell people that shit. I remember my ex would make fun of me. He is great, but like he was like, he would make fun of me because he'd be like, it's your signature. Like, there she goes. Like, I like a happy cry, sad cry. I do it all the time in training. Like, I see same thing. Like, I'll see this moment. I'm like, look at him. <laughs> like, I, like, yeah. I'm just like, I don't even care. Like, yeah. Yeah. you're but, like, it's sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's swear. But like, I, I'm same. Like, 20 year old Jess would have been like, you're fucking lame. Like, yeah. Duh. I feel like we would have been friends probably at the yeah. bar. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to do whatever I want. And now I'm just like, I feel things. It's cool. Like, that's Ashley awesome. would have been serving us drinks at the bar. Oh, no, yeah. We were just getting, we yeah. all worked in nightlife. Let's kind yeah, of, yeah, we did. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's so well, funny. Ashley was a bartender. I shot photo like nightlife photography and videography. Yeah, I took my clothes off, and then you were dancing. <laughs> I was. We all played a part. Throw, we would have thrown a rad party, dude. Yeah, we were, we I were mean, fucking... now we're throwing even cooler parties. Not gonna yeah. lie, yeah. We <laughs> events. Facts. That's where the experience it's real. comes from. No, I mean that's a hundred. They're just dry now. I like, always. They're just, yeah. I would say I tell people. Uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Or uh, like service people? You. Mm. I'm telling you. I mean, bless you, retail people, but. Service industry people. Service is real. It's real. It's yeah. real. Like it's real yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, I have some other questions, but I don't know, Ashley, if you want to I well, no, I just I have a question more. My brain's going like into the fitness, like skater yeah, yeah. world. Like I'm yeah. so so I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, I'm totally got into fitness for a lot of reasons, but one of them is because I want to skate forever. Like mm -hmm. skating is such a huge part of me. Um, and like, I'm so grateful. Like you guys talked about tears and crying. Any tears I produce now are like, it's so like the gratitude I feel at this yeah. point in my life is just Same. unreal, um, for so many different reasons. But mm -hmm. so like, yeah, skating forever because it's been such a gift and such a blessing. And like, I want to keep it up because like one, like I'm scared. I don't know myself outside of it, mm -hmm. but I also love it. Like it's my play. It's my freedom. Mm -hmm. It's my therapy in different ways. Like it's all the things. But so my question is to you and all the training you've done with these skaters, these amazing skaters and humans is like, do you see like any sort of patterns in their performance? Because like skating, like I've noticed in my training and my skating, like I only know zero and 60. Mm. So like what I mean is like in skating, like you commit or you don't do it. Because uh -huh. the in between is where you get hurt, right? Yep. And so what I'm realizing in my training, like I've like started to turn a lot of, like I'm starting to train a lot more and skate a lot less one time, like mm -hmm. the work that we do. Um, and I'm like managing that and shifting that around. But it's also like less falling. <laughs> less yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Higher, still, success like, mm -hmm. higher success rate. Higher success rate. But I, I've noticed that like all I do, like all I know is zero and 60. So like I'm just like, Rah! like, so I don't know 70%. I don't know 50%. Like, um, and yeah. as a Do you mean 60 like, miles per hour? Zero to 60? Well, Is that what you mean? It, sort of. I mean, it's just the phrase. Like, I don't know yeah, the yeah. in between, sort of like. Um, yeah, they're all, you're all or nothing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Zero so I'm just curious because yeah. I'm in this place now of like, as a trainer, as somebody that's like in fitness and like has a career in fitness, like I'm so interested in like really strengthening, yes, people's physical body, but like their uh -huh. mind and like your sort of understanding of what you're capable of and skating, like being able to like take limits off the body and what you're capable of. And so I also do that inside of the gym and people taking mm -hmm. limits off themselves and what they know they're capable capable of and getting to be a part of that process. And like you said, you cry, like I scream and shout so loud out of excitement. Like I think I scare people sometimes at our <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, oh, like I'm going nuts. Like, um, <laughs> because I'm just, it's such a blessing to get to be a part mm -hmm. of that person's process and literally see them light up in a way where I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. they just transformed into a totally new understanding of what they know they can do. Mm -hmm. And that is power. So like my roundabout question here is like, 
have you seen a pattern in skaters and um, their either like mental capacity or like their actual physical capacity? And like, is there a similar pattern of like zero to 60? Like, um, yeah, I don't know. That's not super well articulated, but like, I no. feel like there's something, there's such a mental strength in skateboarding and I nerd out on that. And I love talking to skaters that can do like insane things. And I'm mm -hmm. so curious, like where they are mentally mm -hmm. when they're doing that work. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, just cause I think I'm just so stuck on, in a place of like really strengthening my mind. And I think the body will, the body's not supposed to last forever, mm -hmm. but I know there's a lot of things to do to have it last a very yeah. long time and like a very, in a high performing way. Yeah. So I'm just curious, um, in whatever I just said, that word vomit, <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen any patterns or, yeah, yeah, I think I love, I love what you're saying. Cause I feel, I, I think, um, I, I would say it depends. It's person to person. Yeah. So, and I don't want to give away any, like, I don't, I yeah. want to be able to shout people out, but I also don't want to like, you know, I, in some of my athletes, like I've seen them come out of their shell a little bit more, which has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think in a lot of my girls giving them the, the confidence to, I don't know, this doesn't really have anything to do with training, but more like just like how powerful they are and like, like, really being able to pull them out of like making themselves small and making sure that they, they are, they are seeing themselves how I am seeing them and that they have the confidence to go out there and rip it up and taking away these stories. Like, I feel like even women, my female skaters still tell themselves these stories like, Oh yeah, women just, you know, we're more scared. I'm like, you're telling yourself you're more scared. You're not like, yeah. stop. You know yeah. what I mean? Like even just making them like that mind shift of like, how are you talking to yourself? How are you talking to yourself? What stories are you feeding into about yourself? Because yeah. you can just change that. You can just say is real. It's huge. Self -talk. Like it's like they'll be like, oh, I'm just, you know, like we're more we are more scared as women. I'm like, you're feeding that narrative. Yeah. No one's telling you that anymore. You're feeding that. Stop feeding that. Yeah. So I think like being able to catch those things, like maybe and and show that to them has been a really big process. Um with my guys, I would say it's more dismantling the ego. Uh and not <laughs> they're not coming in like I'm fucking cool. They're not like, they're really yeah. not, but it's like, Oh, this is stupid. Like it's like being able to like get them yeah. to take that down a little bit and, and, yeah. and be okay with being bad at something again. Also my girls too. I think that's actually the biggest thing is where they want to come in and be, because I work with pros, they're like, they want to be the best. They're used be to being, yeah, the best. That's and like so all humans. You just want to uh, do yeah. what you're good at. You yeah. only want to do what you're good at. And so yeah. I think what I've seen over time is just like, being able to get them once for me in the gym setting, like watching them progress and now they're doing things like I'll point it out to them like after eight, six to eight weeks and I'll be like, you see that? Remember when you couldn't do that shit? Like with Mariah, like, you know what I mean? Like, remember when you couldn't fucking do that? Look at you. You're doing it. I didn't tell you anything. And just like being able to make them aware of those wins. Yeah. And, and explaining yeah. to them it's the same. Like you wouldn't fucking tray flip over some stairs before you could ollie. Like you wouldn't. Like you you need to be able to do these little things first and then yeah. build up to the big things. So again, relating it to like what they do. But as far as the mental piece, I think, it, yeah, it, for me, it just takes person to person. Like I, I want everyone to meditate and train their mind. And again, a lot of my people are very open to that, especially my girls. And they're like ready to do it and they're seeing benefits like leo that was a big one for me we had such a journey together uh last year and going through everything he's gone through and the transition and the transformation that he has made within himself and then like meditation being a huge piece of that mm -hmm. and that human made me ball like when they came they're like you changed my life and i'm like holy shit oh cool. you changed your life you did it like i just gave you the tools to be able to do it like you yeah. took action and did mm -hmm. it, yeah. but I don't know, like if that makes sense, like each person is going to have a different moment that yeah. for them, you know what I mean? But just being like aware, clicked. like I want to be able to see my humans, like in seeing, you know, them, their shyness or maybe they're, you know, and like, okay, how do I get them confident? What are the, what are the words I can use to show them like how powerful they are? And, um, or if it's like that cool guy mentality, how can I break that down so I can have you be a better leader? Because fuck, you're great. You, I see you. You're going to be a great leader if you cannot feed that shit. I don't know if that answers the question at yeah. all. But yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I always like even in the gym, I start with breath work. I end with breath work always. Like I want them to be able to be centered in their body, feel it end with breath work and in the middle, like again, just like educating and trying to apply it. It, the more I can apply it to skateboarding and their style and their stance or something that I know that they're trying or like 
I think the more relatable it becomes and the more yeah. that that like push through kind of narrative and those wins like relates back to being out there. Yeah, totally. And I think, I mean, all of what you're doing in terms of like the the little insight we have on like the programs you're creating for these humans is so great. Again, like just everything from starting and ending with breath work to like looking for those moments to celebrate with them because mm. I think it's so easy, especially as a skater, like you get it and then you move on to the next thing, the next, ah, oh, like the next sort of thing I'm going to take yeah. on. And so stopping a second and like sitting with that accomplishment and pointing it out because now there's evidence. Mm -hmm. So now they have to like, you can't be like, nah, it didn't happen. I don't know. What you're right. About. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. wait, look at what yeah. you just did. <laughs> like, well, come back, like celebrate that shit. And yeah. it's so, it's so big to people trying to be able to celebrate their wins because yeah. I'm like, look at how far you've come. Like, yeah. this is a big deal. Like, yeah. I wish I would have done that more in my life. Cause I feel you like even just sitting, I'm like, I'm not, I didn't, you know, but, and then I'm like, no, you no. should celebrate like what it took to get you here. Like 100%. you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 What, um, what advice do you have for people? Like say, I don't know, there's someone who skates and is clearly like actively utilizing their body on a regular basis because they're skateboarding and slamming and getting injured and all that stuff. Um, but you know, for someone who isn't doing anything physical outside of skateboarding, yeah. what advice do you have for that person? Start slow, start slow. I think, uh, you know, even in the athletic performance realm, like I look at, you know, someone on the outside, like your average person that maybe does like CrossFit classes or whatever would be like, these workouts aren't that hard. And I'm like, yeah, because there's, there, we're creating specific adaptations. Like I don't want to like fucking kick their ass. Yeah. They, like I want them to be resilient and I want to be able to create just enough, you know, enough strength and enough like aerobic capacity. It's like make them better at what they're doing. If I'm just coming in the gym and just fucking rip, like, just kicking their ass Tearing to kick their, to, yeah, to make yeah. them feel like they got something done, then I haven't yeah. done my job. So I think like also that, like not knowing where to start or not knowing what to do as far as training, it's like start very slow. Start with body weight exercises, start with mini band stuff, start with 15 minutes. Um, you know what I mean? And like, and just like getting like some base strength stuff in and, and consistency. That's the biggest yeah. thing is like, I don't need you to do like the most gnarly workout ever. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need you to do that once and then be wrecked for an entire week. Like I'd rather see you do three 15 minute little strengthening things that you could do like some core work, some ankle work and start there. And then it'll, it'll come over time. People with habits, they bite off more than they can chew. We all just want to, we all want to go like, I like in, you know what I mean? Like everyone, we're just like, Oh, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go. And then that's why most people fall off with their goals in general is yeah, because yeah. they go way too hard, way too fast, they fall short. not attainable. And then they fall short. And so it's like, okay, just start with like committing yourself to once a week. And then that'll turn into twice a week. And then it'll turn into from 15 minutes to 30 minutes and, and start with what you have. You know, if you can find a coach and train with them, like someone you trust in your community, awesome. Do it. If you can do that, if you can't like start with what you got, you know what I mean? Like if you got some mini bands and you got some body weight stuff and like, uh, that would be my biggest thing. Also, I uh, just advice as much as possible for skateboarders doing unilateral stuff. And what I mean by unilateral is single leg stuff. Um, because that's where you live. Like, yeah, when you ride, you're, you're standing on two legs, but for the most part, you're squatting with one leg your whole life. And then you're pushing, pulling with the other. And like most of what you do, you have a lead foot and a trail foot. And so you're moving. And so being able to train your body separately, like two different sides is going to help make you stronger. So that's like another piece of advice I would say, like, if you're going to choose anything, choose single leg, single arm, one side of the body versus the other side of the body. What would you say about uh, recommending people to have like switch skating days? So standing on the other less dominant and that, leg. That's, that's something why, I've. That's why though. Is this what I mean? Is like, because like, yeah. so most of my people, like if I look at their, their legs, like mm. one leg is much larger than the other, much more yeah. developed. And so that is why like, like do one side versus the other so that you're training both and like yeah. making sure. And then like, as far as on the board, yeah do switch as much as possible. But like, yeah. it's funny to see, like if they're on their lead leg, like I'll have them do like balance pad, eyes closed. Like, um, we'll be doing a lot of like, I'll pull on them with a band and stuff like that. And they have to react. And it's really funny because of course on their lead leg, they're fucking you can tell. killing it. Yeah. And the second we get on their trail leg, it's like, bah! 
<laughs> and yeah. so it's like, but it's, that's exactly what I mean is when you stand on two legs, when you're only doing like double leg squats or you're doing bilateral exercises that hides, you know what I mean? Like your body compensates, it'll find totally. ways to like, and that doesn't mean it's not valuable. So I don't want to say that, but if you're going to choose, like, what do I have access to choosing unilateral, choosing single leg for exactly that reason? Because yeah. you're an imbalanced athlete. So how can we balance you, you know, enough, like even you out, like there's some of that makes you elite. So in my job, it's really important to look at like what imbalances make them elite and that I don't need to touch and what yeah. is valuable for me to, like what is actually hindering them as an imbalance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so that's really important too. But like for your average person, like just trying to start this, just trying to skate, pick unilateral, AKA single leg, one leg versus the other, like do one side of lunges, do the other side, um, and then start fucking small. Like everyone, it's like even with meditation, just start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, even do- with skateboarding, like that's what's yeah. like girls. Like people think they gotta like learn to ollie to become a skateboarder, and we're like, mm, just try standing on your board first without you know. Yeah, like just go ride your board. Like just yeah. go cruise. Like just stand. Like you said, stand on it, play with it. Like it's the yeah. same same idea in training. That's what's beautiful. Yeah. It's like you can mirror them and be like totally yeah. same blueprint different yeah. thing. What yeah. about, um, like soreness, like tips for recovery? Uh, I rest. <laughs> like, I think that's the biggest like thing. Like not skating rest or sleep rest. But, oh my God. Sleep. <sighs> I know Ashley has a whole thing about this. Sleep Ashley, is number you can jump one. in and answer these questions. Too. <laughs> sleep. I mean like sleep seriously. Is- yeah. I was going to say like literally sleep is so key and so valuable. And How many also, hours? <laughs> I mean, eight plus, man, if you can fucking sleep. Nice. I'm so about it. Quality like, too. Yeah. Quality sleep. Quality. Yeah, nap if you got a nap. Like, I listen about, to your body. Are you guys nappers? About, yeah. Yeah, you got to be. Ooh, I like, can't nap. Well, if but you I can't solidly get in sleep. like at least eight hours every night, if not yeah, nine sleeping. in my elder Well, life. so something, Ace, yeah. I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but like I've been reading a lot about circadian rhythm and how if Ooh. we don't go to bed by a certain time, our body has actually been thrown off in terms of what yeah. hormones have been ex- uh, secreted or not secreted because one, exposure to devices, but two, like if you're up past 10 p.m., mm-hmm. now you've messed up like the way that yeah. melatonin gets secreted into the body, which is a hormone that helps you go to sleep and get ready in- into deep sleep cycles. Mm-hmm. So now we're starting to see like New York City has like sleep classes, like a fitness class. People go and nap. So cool. Because, so yeah, cool. which is great, yeah. but that also means people are not like yeah. not knowing how to sleep on their own anymore. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's totally like it'd be a human issue, just like mental yeah. health. Yeah. Because, you know, there's so many things we invented to not have to sleep, like yep. with yeah. caffeine like or. Like, we coffee. just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Devices and it's like, no, I, I, well. yeah. It's crazy. Like, and I tell people again, it's like, okay, your lifestyle is your lifestyle. So I tell my people, like, okay, if you're going to be a person that doesn't go to bed until right, midnight, right. that's cool. But like, sleep till goddamn nine if you can, yeah, or like, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and again, quality sleep, like I, I let people know, like I still drink, but I way fucking less than I used to. And I am like, if you're having like a glass of wine before bed or beer before bed, you're not getting into your deepest REM cycle. You're not going to hit yeah. it. So you're not going to get quality sleep. Yeah. So like, how can you take bits? Like whatever's going to work for you to get quality sleep is really important. Hydration is really important. Yes. And taking rest days. Don't skate yeah. every day. Like yeah. your body will break down over time. Like you have to give it time to recover. It's like, in the like if you're training you have your rest days built in or your active recovery mobility days built in for a reason because yeah. if you go too hard for too long you will like get injured like it's totally. going to happen and yeah. and if you don't give your body time to go through the protein synthesis process like to go through these processes that it actually needs to go to to like replenish everything yeah you're not gonna be ready to go so yeah. i always say like i know everybody wants to skate all the time but just like take a day take yeah. one day a week where you just kind of like or do some flat ground stuff but like just just chill just um hashtag yeah. don't skate every damn day yeah like, <laughs> isn't that the that hashtag like, skate every yeah. damn day skate every like, damn yeah. day yeah. Which is great. The hashtag then, skate every other day and stretch on the other day yeah <laughs> like do the other yeah exactly like do other things that is going to help you be better on those days. You know what yeah. I mean? Like truly, yeah. it's like, I don't want to take away from your skating, but if you take a day, even mentally, like take a day for a second and come back to it and you're probably going to be more ready to go. And everyone wants to, this is actually really annoying to me. Uh, there's a lot of language, I think in the skate world, one, women haven't had access to anything like this before. So I'm really glad that they have it now. Like as far as like PT and training or anything like, but then my guys that have, it's like, uh, lasers and uh, massage therapy, oh, and yeah. I'm like, all that, that was, should, 
at the X Games, they didn't have anything except a fucking masseuse. And I'm like, I, I this was the first that's year like the that weirdest I went, thing dude, ever. that was the, this is the first year at my station at the X Games. I got to, I got to go to X Games last year, which is fucking nuts. So awesome. uh, shout out to Nick Cutry, Modi PT. They're the shit. They brought me through Theragun. But I had a whole station that was like a warm up station with fucking mini bands and proper stretching and like all of the shit that we were doing because it frustrates me because that's not the stuff. So, okay, with massage and with Normatec, I like Normatecs and stuff, but like Theraguns, Normatec, massage, stuff like that, they are things that create short term adaptation. So, like, if you need, for instance, like the physical, ther- the physical therapist I work with, if we need to create space to be able to um, be able to get more range now, like if we're on site, for instance, yeah. like, and I'm working like Deshaun, he's got an ankle thing. If I need to create more space for him right now, short term, then that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use that tool. But guess what? It doesn't la- That's not the thing that creates long-term adaptation. Yeah. Strength training does. That's, that's it. Like, and that's what we know. And like being able to use these devices. So I'm going off on a tangent, but as far as recovery goes, like people want to have that same thing, like fix. Well, let me use the laser. It feels good. Well, that's all it does is it feels good. As long as you know that, that's cool. You can use it. That's all it does is feel good. Same thing with Theragun. Normatec actually helps a lot. There's a lot more that that What's does. What's Normatec? Lasers? It's like the big, it's these. Big, oh, the big laser like things. Yeah. yeah, which gets yeah, like yeah. blood circulation going. But honestly, out of all that shit, not to knock any of those wonderful companies. <laughs> I love them. And I partnered with some of them. <laughs> but <laughs> they're amazing tools. And that's right. just what they are is tools. But the thing that's going to get you better recovery is literally the basic things that we all just want to skip over hydration, sleep and rest. Mm-hmm. Boom. Ba-cha-boom. Nice. And stretch, man. It. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What yeah, do you, if you, if you had to choose one or the other, and this is just in a, like oh, a survival world, people warming up properly or people cooling down properly? I feel like I already know the answer, but I just, it's a common question I get asked. Warming up. Yes. <laughs> Warming the fuck up, exactly. man. Uh, Doesn't that apply to anything, not just skateboarding? Like yeah, it applies yeah. to all physical activity. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's my yeah. biggest thing. You do not see. I'm sorry. Here's my thing. Okay. If you're one also for my pros, like this is the thing I would love to see everybody in the world warming up, but it's because I don't want you to go out cold and get injured. Like there's way more like your body, like proprioceptively, just like hopping on your board, getting like is if you are stimulating it before you get out there, you're going to be way more ready to go and Mm -hmm. like avoid injury better. I know you know this, Ashley, but also for my pros, it's a no brainer. It's literally your fucking job. It's your only fucking job. (laughs) Like, 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 I'm sorry. Like I can go off when people don't do this. I'm like, you are a pro athlete. I don't give a shit if you like the word athlete. Guess what? You are, you're getting paid to do that. And so the only thing you have to do is use your body to skate so perform, why yeah. in the fuck would you not want to warm up to try and avoid being out <laughs> and getting injured? Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Like there's no other pro athlete in the world that doesn't that warm do up. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Zero yeah. chance. That is true. And I yeah. think that resonates. I think that totally will resonates with skaters in general or anyone that's de- like does fitness regularly, does this sort of training. Like there's days where you get on a skateboard and you're like, whoa. This I don't feel it's not one of those days. Oh yeah, today, you know I had I mean? one yesterday. Yeah. I went on cruise and I was like, wow, ah. totally, <laughs> totally. And I think even just sometimes like my mind and my body are not working as one yet on the mm-hmm. skateboard, aka like I am not warmed up. So I because yesterday I did it. I was like, yeah. I just need to get out of the house, <laughs> and I didn't take my own goddamn advice. And guess what? When I got out there. I was eating Whoa. shit left and right yeah. <laughs> and like just being like, oh, ooh, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. And I had a moment. I was like, well, you didn't worry. You just, you just left. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a difference. It makes yeah. a difference. Yeah. Sure. When I think at the end of the day from the conversations and the people I know and even my own experience, like people just don't know what it is to do, like what a warm up is Facts. and what it feels like and when am I warmed up. And but yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's the main thing. But, uh, I agree. And that's the thing. And, and exercise can be daunting. Like I said, like now, now, like Mariah, like it's like no brainer. They just like do their stretches and their exercises and they go through it. But that took like a good eight months of like doing that over and over and over again and me hammering messages into them over and over and over again. Yeah. Now they're into it, you know? So I love what y'all are doing now with like the warm up. Like that's so yeah. fucking awesome because it makes it accessible um, to be able to do that. And I'm trying to redo my relationship with <laughs> social media so that I can do that for people well. together. Yeah, we are because people are like, we want this. And I'm like, yeah, but I hate the internet. <laughs> but, I know. But it is a great tool to be able to give people that. So 
we're going to do it. It's going to be Thank awesome. you. Yeah. That was that my, actually one of my questions. Cause we talked about this a while ago, but what do you all have in the works and what is, you know, what, not just what do you have in the works, but what, what are you passionate about doing, you know, next or beyond what you're already doing in the future? Um, what, if you had a magic wand, you know, like what would you create or what would you be doing mm. that you aren't already doing right now? Oh man. So many things. Um, but I'm really glad I met this one. So we got some things in the works, which will be really cool. Yeah. Um, very grateful for that connection. Um, How many people told both of you guys that you had so, to meet before so you actually met? So many. I was the one that it happened, by the way. I'm like, uh, fucking I You sure <laughs> did. You really yeah. did. I'm like the fucking queen of conference calls. So I'm like, if anyone out there wants to meet and it's not happening and you it's know It's so me, true. That is yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you made it happen. And so, so if people aren't clear on what's <laughs> happening right now, people have told me and Jessica that we should meet like yeah. so many times. So many so times. Many, so many times. people. So many people. Fitness, and, skateboarding. Yeah. yeah. It's just All over. Community. Yeah. yeah. And, now we, and now we're here. And now we're here. So um, finally. Finally. And the, who knows? There's probably like three other, four other people out there that are going to be eventually like on your guys' squad or team. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That are professionals really, in fitness as well. I know. And that's kind of my whole thing is like, I don't know. I want to be, I will one, I'm focusing now on just getting through this Olympic season. Cause I thought I was like, do I even still have a job? I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Like it's been, and it's been quite the ride. So I'm really glad the Olympics are not canceled and that we're still moving through with that. But, um, my goal is to be able to, like I said, like one, I would love to have a facility. Like I would love to be able to have like a facility that is specific training and skating and it feels like a skate shop and it's just like a safe space to come and do all of those things. Like that would be fucking awesome. Um, and then, but then on top of that, like being able to create content that's more accessible to your average skater. So AKA I need to figure out how to use the internet better or not, you know, or just need, like get open to it. Cause I have my hate, love, hate with social media. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and, and being able to create content that you could reach anyone, like you're saying, like some kid in the Midwest that like ha doesn't have access to like, like LA does, um, being able to work with pros and kids and people of all levels. Um, but also being able to create that space. Like I would love to be able to have all of that. I want to have coaches that are helping you. I want one elevating from within the community, like being able to create that, like, um, culture is really important. Like not bringing out outside people, but being yeah. able to have more people. Like when we connected, I was like, boom, this is great. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, also having different mediums. Like I want, everyone to have their different skill sets. Like I do want breath work classes and mobility classes as well as strength. And I want to be able to run, you know, high performing programs for pros as well as like kid programs. And also like being able to teach pros the skills, which I know Kim, you're passionate about this. Like, like what skills they've had. Like there's so many older, like in knowing the team at Nike SB, we've talked about this, but there's so many like pros that get older and then they're done with their career and they're like, I don't know how to do anything else. And it's like, yo, yeah. you have so many skill sets that you just yeah. don't realize you have, like, yeah. let me teach you how to do this. So, sure. so all of that, being able to create this ecosystem to like make better humans within the skateboarding community and be able to give them more access and, and be a more empowered person. So I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't no. know what that looks like, but in general, like, I'm just like, happening. I just want this big working machine to just like, do rad shit with yeah. that, you know? We're going to yeah. make that happen here in the yeah. day. I yeah. guarantee it. Well, oh. the facility part is in the works. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Tight. yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, so now you really are trying to grow me up to the bay. I don't Yo. know. <laughs> I just well, got to play that. I also <laughs> okay, part time maybe. talks about Scaly Girl LA as well. So, like, that is also potentially in the works. So, we'll see. But California is all drivable. So, that's a nice uh, thing. True. We're out here now. Yeah. True. Yeah. But that's so awesome. awesome. I mean, everything that you shared and like what I've taken away from what you're about is really just about like contributing to other people and like giving yeah. back and like giving people the things, the tools, the whatever practices that like you figured out on your own mm -hmm. um, and sort of just like paying it forward, you know, and that's like yeah. so cool. I just think that that's, again, something that isn't common. You know, a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily have this internal drive to give away to, to give it away they like keep it to themselves or whatever mm -hmm. um or they just aren't like aware enough um like i think if you've done the work on yourself you're able to be more open to 
um, contributing to others and you're able to actually just give a shit about other people because Mm -hmm. you have like, you know, got to this point. Um, and I think it does come with age maybe a little bit, but it also comes with like, you've been through shit, you figured it out, you come to the other side and you're able Mm -hmm. to really like step out of your own little self, you know, caring bubble and like actually contribute to other people. So that's that's like what I, when I think about, you know, I know we don't like, we just met not too long ago, but just Mm -hmm. like, I already knew that about you. Anyone who is a coach or a trainer or a mentor or in some, you know, industry or field where you're focused on educating, inspiring, empowering others, like that is just something that, you know, is, is who you are already mm-hmm. before I even talk to you. Like I knew that yeah. and that's so cool. And that's why we also wanted to just spotlight you and like let yeah. people know that it's not about being necessarily the best yourself all the time, especially in skateboarding. Like, uh, yeah, like the normal pathway is like, Oh, I want to be a pro skater. But there's also so many roles and um, ways to be a part of the community and the industry where it's about contributing to others. And if anything, there's more roles of how to contribute to others um, than there's, you know, there there is for slots for pro skaters, slots for the Olympic team. Literally, there's like a a cap on how many slots there are. But and that's the um, thing, like I appreciate that. Number one, that's my biggest thing is I just want people in my life to feel seen and to feel heard. And I genuinely see so many gifts in everyone that I meet. I think that's my biggest thing. I just see people and I'm like, man, you're a shiner. I mean, there's people out there that are not, trust me, I'll meet people and be like, you're a bad apple. We're just going to move on. But like, you know what I mean? Like, but for the most part, like you see this shining piece of a human. And then I see all of these things that are just keeping them from being able to live that. And I, again, like, I'm like, what is the one thing I can give in my life that, what do I have a scope on that? So how do I help you get past all of that? Like like remove the barrier. Yeah. Like whatever that means, like movement is my vessel to do that. Um, and I like, that's my vessel to be able to start that work and get that going and I'll make you a better pro skate. Like that's given, that's easy. And the other stuff just comes with it. And the more that that happens, the more than that gets paid forward to other people and they can like, it's a chain reaction, you know? And like you said, like, even if it's like, okay, you're going for being a pro, this is what I tell people. That's your plan A, fucking go all for it. But guess what? If life happens and that doesn't happen, there is plan B, C, D just within that realm that you just created for yourself that you could also have access to. And, um, you know, so I think that's like the more that we can get more people like us in those positions and being able to elevate and like, do more within that route, the better, like just the better all around, like more perspective, more, more scope and lens in that world. Like, I just can't even wait. Like, I'm like, it's going to happen. Like the more that we have these people in these positions, pulling other people up with different perspectives, like the better everyone can be all around. And like, yeah, it's going to be for sure. (laughs) I can't wait. Well, and something I'm really getting like an overarching theme through these conversations with y'all is like, one, you're never too young and you're never too old to have a mentor. And like, oh, yeah. so important to like, be like mindful of like, who it is you're looking up to and who do you look up to and, yeah. and all and that why. stuff and why. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. The other thing too, I, um, I heard the other day on a podcast was like, you know, we talk a lot about like who we surround ourselves with and stuff like that. And sometimes we have control of that and sometimes we don't, mm-hmm. but it also like who, like what information are you surrounding yourself with? Like books, are you reading like mm-hmm. podcasts? Like that's also like how you surround yourself. So mm-hmm. Just, I feel like that mentor piece is so important. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so huge. I've had so many mentors in my life. Like, oh man, I've had some good ones and I've had some bad ones. And you've had to like, <laughs> you know, you, you you learn from it and you notice totally. like you're, but being able to have that good internal compass where then you can decide for yourself, like who's a good mentor. Having, I would say like, you're so right on that because one, I have mentors still now. I will always attach to myself. I will always have a mentor and I will always attach to people that are doing like, I've, I always tell people, don't be afraid to be the dumbest person in the room. Yeah. Like if you, like the more you surround yourself with people that are doing better than you and then you're willing to be vulnerable, like, that's the only reason I've gotten as educated as I have because yeah. I was willing to step into the arenas that I didn't belong and mm-hmm. be like, yeah, whatever. I'm here anyway. And I, yeah. I want to, I want to know what you know. Yeah. Um, and like having, one mentors in your life that like help elevate you and being able to notice that and what are you surrounding yourself with and what are their intentions with you and like I've had so many amazing strength conditioning coaches and then so many like just people people and like 
having those always as a guiding light is so vital because then you don't feel as lost also. Totally. And having different ones, like I think coming up as a young person and a young coach, one, having like maybe one or two just like solid people as you build your base of who you are, at least as a coach, I would say, and like getting the fundamentals down. But then like, then get lots of different, you know, like kind of oh, broaden your scope and you can gather inspiration from a lot of different people. And like, as long as you have the internal compass to know, like, are your intentions good or bad? Like, do I trust you? And like trusting that, like trusting that gut piece is like really important. But yeah, fuck yeah. You need those people that you can be like, I don't have the answer. Like look yeah. to them, like get that guiding light. Yeah. Like it's valuable. As fuck. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So true. Oh man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> This Any other questions? So good. I know. I feel like we could talk for like hours and hours. I know. <laughs> totally. Totally. There's things yeah. to do, like, you know, use the bathroom and eat food. <laughs> eat food. Eat snacks. So we're yeah. like, <laughs> we are recording this right now during quarantine because of COVID-19. Right. But I don't know when we put this out, that might change. So, but yeah. right now, you know, right now, this is like normal life right now, just for everyone. It is. It's yeah. man. It I've was, been on so many Zoom calls. Like yeah, calls, see, I've been FaceTiming, Zooming. Have y'all had? I've had some highs and some lows too, man. Oh my goodness, every day has been different. <laughs> Should oh, yeah. I talk about that for a minute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. the unique totally. place, a unique time, and the unique time in the world. Oh man, Just there's like, some weird shit going on. Like it was like, like I said, like everything was fucking rolling, and it was dude. like, dude, bam. I'm, I'm Especially like, with off. skateboarding yeah. this year, like shit was dude. crazy. Like I almost feel like the universe, like at least for me personally, like uh, gave. I, me this gift of like literally everything's canceled stay in your house mm -hmm. because I was at, to this point where I'm like oh my god there's so much happening right now I don't yeah. even oh, I can't yeah. even like it just wasn't if we kept going at that pace I oh, think yeah. I would have just been yeah like, I was supposed out. to yeah well, you see, full on survival yeah yeah too much happening at once it's funny you say that too because like I'm but like if, well now it was like scary I'm just glad that like we're still going with the Olympics and like I still yeah. am able to take care of these athletes and I have that lens because when it first happened I was like oh my god did I just move to LA and like what do I what, what, like yeah. what do I do um but now that I know that it's funny you say that because I look back and like I was hustling my fucking ass off last year to like make all of this happen and, and make this position a reality and be able to do this. And then it was like, move to LA. And then four weeks after you move to LA, you're going to be in China and Dubai and Australia. And then you're going to come back for a week and then you're going to, and it was just like rolling. And now I, I call this the world's timeout. Like the yeah, world is putting totally. us all in timeout. And like, totally. there's a lot of uncertainty and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of like, and I, and I think it's forcing us to face ourselves in whatever way. Totally. I was just talking about that. I've literally been talking to like all the people I love in my life, family, friends, mm -hmm. coworkers, all of it. And I'm finding that either people are feeling busier than they were prior in a different way yeah, um, yeah. because of like the just sort of uncertainty and like the like, we've never seen something like this in our lifetime mm -hmm. or, and, and, or I'll say, or um, like a heaviness. And I think oh, yeah. what I'm realizing and here I'm listening to people and what's coming up for them is we haven't had this much time to be with ourselves. And people are really having to like, especially because there's not like an end date right now. Uh -huh. And so people are really having to like be with themselves, be with their families. Their families, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a big like, one. Things yeah. are coming up. You gotta and deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I, honestly, because I've just had a place in my life where I just see everything as such an opportunity and a blessing. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this is who, like, what's going to be on the outside of this? Like, you know, and I get that, like, we could talk about like economy and like all the like theories oh, yeah. of like why this is all happening and blah, blah, blah. But I just, I really do see like people. Having it's like hitting reset. Like what other oh, yeah. time in life? I've never experienced anything in my lifetime. Where There's you get to that. Like, it, like I, it's like, it's like a reset button. And it's also like attachment. Like for me too, like letting go of attachment, like mm. what's in my control and what's out of my control for totally. real, yeah. like for real, for real. And now again, sitting with yourself, resetting, okay, let's reevaluate. Um, and just be in the world. Yeah. I always yeah. got to be doing something, but like, yeah. it really is like that reset. Let's just be for a second. Oh, let me also face my demons. And like, like it really is just like, uh, and it's yeah. really powerful and interesting. Like regardless of anyone's feelings around it, every single fucking person in the world is affected yeah. by this. Like when has that yeah. ever happened? Yeah. Like, it's not like, you know, like we're all, you know, like struggling or like it, figuring all this out. Like everyone yeah. is sitting in this. So it's fucking yeah. fascinating. It's very 
Yeah. And a time where the world is so torn apart, it's like a chance to literally have to like deal with being connected. Like yeah. ironically, totally connected physically, but connected yeah. not yeah. physically, you know, very yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. So yeah. crazy. Yeah. When, and I think there's like the piece of like, we have, we live in such a place that's historically used fear as such a tool to control people. And so I think it's really interesting how like we're going through this ebb and flow of this crisis right now and how people are like, you know, either dealing with like the fear and like perpetuating it or like questioning it. Like everyone I've talked to is at like a different place every day, every week, like understanding of what's going on. And I think it's just shining some light on like, how do you like on a big scale, but also on a small scale, like how mm -hmm. does this also show up in your life in other ways? Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Just the fear, the like sort of fear. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think one takeaway from all of it is just like people are going to recognize how much we actually need each other because we live in this yeah. modern world where we don't think we need you could literally not yeah. like leave your house like this is actually a good time for this to happen right because mm -hmm. like prior to this like you could I know people that work in like tech in like the Bay Area that like don't need to go to the grocery store they don't need to go interact physically with people they sit in a cube maybe they're an engineer like whatever and there's this whole idea of like people take time like they're a waste of time. So I'd rather text than call. Like if yeah. someone calls me, I'm not going to answer. I'm just going to text back. That's more efficient. That's quicker. And like the takeaway really from all of this is that like we need people like each other, like human interaction. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so real. glad for it. So real. Cause that's my, I've always been this way. People are funny. Me, and Mimi Noop it cracks me up because I send her voice notes and she's like, stop it. Like it stresses her out. <laughs> and she's like, it's so not for me, but like, can't wait to I, have you on the show, Mimi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout Mimi. Out. Oh my God. Uh, I know she's the best. Um, truly, truly, truly the best. I'm very grateful to her as well for being a female, elevating other females because yeah she's a big big player in this 100%. um and so yeah but like i i feel like it's it's what was i saying i just got to, uh, mimi new oh <laughs> we got all I was like, oh, mimi um but like yeah like i it's it's so fucking important and it's that reset of like again like letting go of like okay like now you're not busy you know you might be but like not as and like yeah. you don't have as much to distract you you don't have an excuse like like you need people and we need each other and like being able to talk to people. And I've always been a big advocate. People are like, you'll talk to anyone. I'm like, hell yeah. I'll talk to every <laughs> single person. You never know who you're going to meet. But like, even on the street, when I am six feet away, I'm like, you good? Like, are you okay? Like, and smiling <laughs> at people. And I'm uh, really hoping that this whole experience brings that back to like, what's important to you. If you have to let go of everything, your job, your, your, what, whatever it is, it's keeping you busy. Like, what really matters at the end of the day yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like what are the things that you have to come back to with people and interacting and like caring for each other in a genuine way totally. like, is that like a southern hospitality team a hospitality <laughs> team just maybe like, you know like, people say hi to each other right is that like yeah. real it's real like even uh, like in like in the city like people like talk and say hi to each other uh-huh Oh yeah. Like, I, I mean, it. it's, it's getting the different opposite now. Of San Francisco. Yeah. No. I had to learn. That was the biggest thing. One, I, I think I've always just been, I even, even in the Southern world, I'm just like, what's good. I'll talk to my teller. I'll talk to, I just want to talk to people, but it is a Southern thing where you say, Hey y'all, you walk down yeah. the street, you check on your neighbors. Like you it's do cultural. a cultural. Yeah. yeah. When I moved to Portland, and even the West Coast still, even in LA. Oh yeah, like people, LA. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. the opposite. Yeah. That is, is that rough where you're just like, why is everyone like- No, because I just don't care. I'm just still like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, good, I'm literally- good, like, like, You never know like what someone needs to hear. And even if I get a frown back, I just truly believe this. And I like won't get in people's faces, but even if it's a small smile, it's just like, you don't know. Like for instance, it seems really silly, but like if you like something about someone, tell them. They might yeah. be having a really shitty day and that might have just like made their whole day. Yeah. yeah, LA West Coast does not like to just be like, honey, you look good. Like you look yeah. real good. You're doing it today. Yeah. And like people don't do that out here. So I'm just yeah. trying to bring that yeah. out here. Like bring it. <laughs> Definitely bring it. Don't yeah. stop. Uh, that's don't thing. let us stop you. Yeah. <laughs> that's I awesome. got you. I'm gonna pull you in. You're oh gonna be gosh. like <laughs> I remember I went to Atlanta like in twenty it was like two thousand seven probably. Mm. And I was there for a conference and I got on the bus, like public transportation. Oh no, you did literally. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like sitting there and, and then like we got up to the next stop and literally every person, there was like a whole social hour before the bus actually left the stop. Everyone was like, Hey, and I was like, is this like everyone's usual route? Like they must know each other. 
and it was just every stop. It's crazy. It was the longest bus ride, but the best bus ride because I was like, hey, how's it going? Da, da, da. And I was like, could not figure out if people either knew each other or not. I was convinced they knew each other. But they might like, not. What's going they on? Did not. I, they did not because then they were like talking to me and I was like, what? It's a thing too. It's like I remember living like on Clifton Street. I know my neighbors at Holler at them. They were, they were cooking some Molly or some shit. Like they were fucking trap housing out the wazoo. But they, we would <laughs> chat and do whatever. And then like I even had my like, I don't want to say bums, but like homeless people. Like, like there was this chick Mary and this dude Leroy. And Leroy had a, he would cut our grass. And like Leroy was the dude. And then like Mary would just come around and I'd, she'd just be like, the we'd let her like sit on the porch and chat with her. Like, it's just like people just like check on each other and chat with each other. I think it is a Southern thing maybe. Yeah. Wow. It's like a, yeah. Cultural for sure. Like I care, like we, we care and hug and touch. Yeah. And like, that was another thing too, coming out here. I'm a toucher. And like, I'm like, Ugh, and people are just like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now we now have you're, to be. Now, you're now, not a, like, now, yeah. now, now, you have now to. nobody's touching. But, uh, it's a thing for sure. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Oh man, this has been great. Um yeah. Well, so there's generally a way we end our conversations. Well, we've only had two other guests, but we're creating traditions here. I like that. Um and how we do that is we acknowledge our guests. So um what that means is that we're just gonna share with you, you know, uh who you are for us, who you are for our community, and you know, who we see you to be. Um, so you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you just have to sit there and listen. That's powerful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, would you like me to go first or Ashley, do you want to go first? Uh, either I way. I don't mind. I'm excited either way. Okay. Um, I'll go first. Okay. Um, all right, Jess. So first of all, just thank you for taking the time. Um, you for having me. Yeah. I'll, sh- I'll sh- but yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to just like, share your experiences, open up your brain, open your heart to, you know, this, whoever's out there listening. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge you for being someone who has literally like brought a whole different way of, of life and like a a whole lifetime, multiple lifetimes of experiences, good and bad, um, to this community. Right. Like to be able to be someone who's persistent and resilient, like and get those 10 no's, <laughs> whether it's getting Alexis to stretch or <laughs> thank you to hire you, like whatever it was, right? Um, mm-hmm. I know how challenging it is to actually affect change in um, a culture and a community. Um, and, you know, it takes someone who's resilient, who's unstoppable. And I just acknowledge you for being that person and actually um, demonstrating what it is like to really be like to embody like skateboarder mentality. Like a lot of people think, Oh, I'm a skater. I'm not a skater or whatever. At the end of the day, to me, it's like, if you're someone who's willing to go for something, you know, and keep trying at it and failing a bunch of times and being willing to continue to fail, like you're a skateboarder, you know? Um, and so for you to take on that way of being and to literally create a position for yourself that never been done before in the face of like everyone being like, no, not possible. Um, and coming from everything you had to come from to make that happen and be the first, you know, USA team skate trainer, um, and strength coach. Um, I don't know the exact title, something similar to that, um, is just, not only is that obviously valuable for, you know, the skaters and the people in their lives, but it's valuable for our community because you're demonstrating that anything is possible. Um, whether it's someone's dream to become an Olympic skater or someone's dream to work in this community, work in this industry, make a living, um, create something that literally isn't there, right? You're the walking, like living, breathing demonstration that, 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 that that's possible. So I just want to thank you for that because there's not that many people, um, that are going to be willing to put in the work ethic and deal with the emotions that come with all that to make it happen. So like just from me to you, from us to you, like, thank you for being that person and thank you for just allowing everyone to, and this is like, I talk to Ashley about this all the time, but just like, allowing people to be the best version of themselves. Like you hold the space for people to do that. And that is just such a unique thing that I appreciate you for. And I want all of us in our community to be able to like take on being that way for each other. So 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so hard. Yay. Yeah, we made so it. <laughs> no, I'm just I love kidding. crying. But it's it's okay. yeah. It's just water. It's like peeing from your eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? Never heard that? <laughs> I've never I say that all the time. People have oh, all yeah. this thing about like, especially crying. I guess athletes too. They have this whole thing about being macho, not cry. Like there's no crying in baseball, right? <sighs> but I'm just like, dude, one, like humans were designed to cry. So yeah. obviously we should cry. That's like saying you shouldn't pee. It's like, no, your, like your body that. needs to d- release these liquids, right? Totally. Yeah. And then two, yeah, like there's no stigma around peeing, it's, but it's the same thing. If you really think about it, it's liquids leaving your body. Yeah. You ain't wrong. <laughs> that you actually Beautiful. don't really have a lot of control over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you squeeze out a tear. Squeezing the juice. Yeah. yeah. Squeezing. Yeah, there you go. There it Ooh, is. There's a new spin on it. Oh. Bring it back. Um, so we're trying to squeeze it in all regards. But yeah, cool. All right, your turn, Ashley. Oh, oh my God. I've been like, yeah, this has just been absolutely incredible. This is exactly what this show is about, Jessica. Thank you for making the time, whatever you had to put aside, like, you know, what, like saying the right thing or the best thing or whatever it is, like, thank you for being vulnerable and knowing how powerful it is to be vulnerable and share your story and how powerful it's going to be for folks to hear that. Um, and giving up what you have to give up to share all that. Um, and on top of that, like, I'm going to bring it back to like the admiration that I have for your ability in all the obstacles that you've come about since you were a little girl up until this very moment now. Like, yeah, that the gold, whatever it was when you hit rock bottom and you make a choice to not further self-destruct or something worse, but to be able to like lift yourself up and choose a new path or do something different. Like it's incredible. And I think it's such a testament to the beauty of the human body and mind. Um, and like, thank you. Um, and yeah, and I'm and I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I get the blessing that it was and it was all meant to be for you to be who you are for everybody you come in contact with, whether it's that Southern charm um, or it's the love for humanity and the love for humans and really getting like that we all have something to heal from and it's just the imperfection of the human experience. And it's all a part of this puzzle called life where we come together to help each other heal. And I get that you're doing that through fitness and you're doing it through skateboarding and you're finding your people and it's just as, as mutual of a contribution. And I, it's so perfect that it's you. It's a no brainer to me um, and who you are and what you've had to do to get here. And your persistence is like a legacy that I see will live like so far beyond you. Um, and I get that you'll, you might not ever know this, the true, um, limit or like limitlessness you've created for other people because of that space you're creating, like Kim said. Um, and that's like such a true testament of your humility and your true love, like for people and what you do. And you've really found exactly what you should be doing and what you should be up to. And like, it's just so beautiful to like, to have met you and to like get to create with you and yeah you were like kim said like you've executed like being a human on this planet in such an incredible way and like yeah keep doing what you're doing because it's exactly what this world needs so thank you so much <laughs> y'all too i can't that was really hard that was really hard to listen to in the best way um and i'm gonna ball my eyes out when we get off the phone that's what i do yeah um but i'm really thank you for saying all those very kind things and like uh seeing me and giving the space for people like me to come in and share our experiences and talk about it and thank you for being two very powerful women doing the exact same thing and like i am so grateful to be able to be connected with the two of you be rising at the same time and being able to have these conversations. And like, I'm very, very grateful. Like, to, like hearing that it's very powerful what you're doing, doing that at the end, because it's like you, you are seeing me and we all do that for other people. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for what you're doing with this podcast, what you're doing personally within this community and in this space as well. I'm excited to do it together. And like, um, 
Yeah. I just like, thank you. I can't even, I'm like, I can't believe we all just said all that. I appreciate you so much. It was, it has, you take a moment and you're like, fuck, I have worked my fucking ass off to get here. And all I want to do is continue to help and bring people with me that want to help as well. And so like, just thank y'all. Y'all are forces and I'm going to, I can't. <laughs> really Y'all are really special. So thank you. Yeah. Grateful. You're welcome. It's yes. just the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah true. So it's cool. True. Yeah. I think that's it. We just got a new uh, definition of the show, squeezing the juice. Yeah, yeah. like for real. Make them cry. Make them cry. Because that wasn't the intention initially. Yeah. Just like squeezing the juice out of squeezing life. Squeezing the juice out. Right. Please the comment is. below if you are crying too. Are yes. You crying? <laughs> it's gonna be our new sponsor kleenex <laughs> bye zine bye, bye zine. zine kleenex yeah, yeah. whatever oh else God. yes oh, okay. so good oh man awesome oh. well thank you so much again you. for your time you so and much. um you know we'll have to have you back too when we get this off off and running i'd be honored um, yeah one thing that has come out of all of this is we actually had we all had the time to like make this call happen because it I, wasn't see, gonna happen it was, it's it's true we couldn't get it down I'm without the you, lockdown yeah these are the things i connected with a woman named kate like there, there's been some things that have happened like within this lockdown yeah, yeah. that i'm like oh the universe is like hey prioritize this yeah, okay. yeah. whatever yeah. look at the yeah. silver linings all around they're there percent <laughs> yeah yeah i totally agree with that awesome <sighs> All right. Well, for everyone that's listening or watching, you know, just thank you guys for your attention today and hope, hope this was valuable. Um, I know it was for me. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> selfishly, we just do this for us, you know? Yep. Um, but our goal is that other people can benefit too, you know? So um, if, if anyone has questions, obviously we'll, there'll be links on, you know, the YouTube and our Instagram to follow Jess and um, just learn more about what she's up to. Um, but we will continue to have more guests and share more stories. And thank you all for just tuning in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>